this is like the great like warrior Haas. Like like you're you're talking to some nobody from the Jesse Lee Peterson show and you're out on every opportunity to defend what you pretend is your ideology because like what? It's more fun to like hear him degrade feminine men and imagine you in the opposite category. You're a pussy, bro. All right, today we'll learn, I don't know, infrared versus Hake. Hake is, I'm pretty sure, a Nazi, and infrared is, uh, uh infrared, you know, uh, let's go. I think when we have a discussion uh, about the over putting a overall historical verdict on judging the legacy of communism. I do agree that when we're talking about communism, we do have to talk about what that actually meant in reality. So this idea that, you know, communism has never been tried or it, it wasn't true communism. Bro. It doesn't actually reflect the real thing. I think we don't have to, that's not something that has to be in dispute. We can all agree that communism specifically in the 20th century refers to a phenomena that begins with the Soviet Union continuing through uh, countries like China, um, other countries in uh, the world outside of Europe and America, and the Eastern Bloc, and so on and so Make on. Make it bigger? As it's well just as their the faces. legacy of capital C communist movements uh, within like uh, the United States Here. and Western Europe and so on. So I think there's no dispute about the fact that communism does have to refer to the you know, the thing that actually props the name into relevance and significance in the first place. And to me, uh, when you begin from there, you have to have a very honest and sober assessment of the, the, the record and the facts at hand. Now, the experience of communism was obviously very bloody. It was obviously uh, something that was fraught go. with catastrophes, to say the least, economic catastrophes, uh, famines, um, moments of political terror, and so on and so on. But we should have a more broader... Uh, Got it. investigation and criticism of whether this is specifically because of communism rather than a feature of modernity as such, because the modernization of, let's say, even the Western uh, capitalist countries and the world at large uh, fits the same pattern that we saw, if not far okay. worse, actually, Wait, I would argue, what? Stop that. Uh, in the case of communism. There we go. Okay, I've said this before with, um, with infrared, um, and this is, I guess, like, it's really embarrassing that a lot of people didn't understand this when first listening to him, but... Uh, I, infrared's main strategy as a, as an interlocutor is not understanding what any words mean. So he he does he he it's it, funnily enough like he he does almost the Sam Harris kind of thing, or the Jordan Peterson kind of thing, where he will I express absolute fucking nonsense, um, but with like cycling through words that sound vaguely Marxian. Um, but, but he, he understands the language as well as a person who doesn't speak English, who's pantomiming the sounds they've heard on TV, you know. Communism. The prerequisites to the agricultural and industrial modernization of the non-communist world, uh, required in, an immense level of, um, famines, uh, social instability, terror, unrest, um, colonialism, slavery, and so on and so on. Finally in the a world. content Genocide. creator for me. These are all things <laughs> that aren't, um, that can't be brushed to the side when we're evaluating um, how modernization takes place uh, historically. So to me, you have to place communism within that context of this question of pre-modern and largely agrarian societies confronting and trying to persevere through this challenge of modernity. And to me, uh, modernity, specifically in the form of agricultural modernization, somehow historically inevitably leads to this kind of um, chaos. What's he and talking about? Who knows? Food is produced and in the way uh, the foundation of economies, agricultures, um, is preserved, right? So this is obviously something fraught with several, you know, small mistakes can lead to catastrophic outcomes. But at the very least, we can say that these mistakes were on record, things that communist states learned from uh, after they were made very quickly. Like her, I'm already lost. There's nothing to be lost about. Guys, you're not, you're not lost, okay? You're, you're trying to find a, a path through a bowl of SpaghettiOs, okay? Hold on. Hake and Infra are, are both um, phenomenal characters, so I have no doubt as time passes, you know, this, this will go back and forth. Hake, for what it's worth, though, I don't actually think that Infra is stupid. Um, Hake is very, very dumb. Like, just very unintelligent, you know, just at a, just a baseline level. So, 
we'll see how that how the interplay you know comes about quickly i should add and when you don't only look at the negatives that are mostly mass publicized as a result of cold war anti-communist propaganda and uh and elsewhere you have to also have a fair and sober assessment of the overwhelming achievements of communist parties and leading their respective peoples uh to a position a social position far superior uh, to them before, whether in the realm of literacy, acculturation, medicine, um, access to a bare minimum of a standard of living, a basic dignified means of livelihood, a kind of guarantee of a job, so on and so on. Obviously, this came to a certain limit and crisis in the 1970s, where this primary standard of living was no longer enough um, to support the wants and desires and aspirations of peoples in communist states. Follow but nonetheless, this up. I think we can retrace and reevaluate the original significance of communism in order to now address and put into a new light the challenges that we now face today, which our current liberal order seems to be unable to, um, to deal with. We're facing a fourth industrial revolution. We're facing an economic transition not uh, dissimilar to the one that communists were addressing, namely the one from pre-modern uh, agrarian societies to industrial societies. Now we're in a situation of industrial societies transitioning into an era of smart cities and, you know, and, and more internet-based economy text, though, left more kind of decentralization. And I think that communism has uh, a new newfound significance uh, in this regard. So I think I'll just uh, end it there. Woo! You got it. Thank you very much for that opening statement. Infrared, <clears throat> want to let you know, folks, if it's your first time here at Modern Day Debate, we are thrilled to have you here no matter what walk of life you are from. And we are also thrilled to have here James Hake. Thanks so much for being with us. The floor is all yours for your opening statement as well. Well, thank you. And thanks to Haz Infrared for coming on as well. This was Today was my introduction to Haz and Infrared and what they – or he, I think it's they, believe. I think what? he's a Marxist, Leninist, Leninist communist. What is interesting to me about him is that he does not appear as rabidly anti-white, anti-Christian, anti-man as the typical communists that I think of that I run into, I don't know, looking around America, like the Democrats, the Black Lives Matter, Antifa people, the mainstream media types. And I, I saw a video where he said you can be patriotic and, and nationalist as well as communist. But I, my take on oh, communism no, is that it's atheistic at its root. Like you have to be an atheist to be a good communist was one quote from a famous communist, I think I've heard, promoting the insane idea of equality, which is not an ideal, nor is it the truth. The serpent told Eve in the Garden of Eden that you can be equal with God, and that's a lie. And feminist communists have sought to be equal with men, and it's just been a big mess since then. Communism Girl. seems to be against men and against nature. It, it around in America, it has sought to render the men unnecessary to the women and to the children. True. And it's it does not mind, as he said, famine, abortion, forced vaccination in the name of, you know, against healthy individuals who are not at high risk from diseases that don't threaten them. It's a violation of individual. They don't mind a uh, violation of individuals rights for the so-called collective, the greater good. Uh, it pushes the lives. Does anger they care angry. about individual it, rights? The communist unions seek to persuade the angry so-called workers to go up against and subvert the, the bosses who envisioned, started, built, and led the businesses that gave them the jobs. And the communists, the communists sometimes pretend to be friends and want mutual benefit for everyone. And some of them may sincerely feel that way, but in the end, it's, it's a phony thing. The best intentions are the road to hell, as you right. may know. Communists don't mind lying, stealing, and killing to get their way. Many others do too. Dennis Prager said, words and ideas are more important for uh, the intellectual, which is the same thing as a communist or a liberal, as than actions and reality. So it's partly why the straight-talking Nazis are much more maligned than the sweet-talking communists, which the mainstream media is, you know, they, they have a, they pander to, basically. In America, I think what we, we have what's called, what I call commie, commie capitalism, because Amazon, Google, Facebook, all of these are in bed with the government, they support True. Black Lives Matter, Antifa, just destruction of the country. They support the mass immigration that's that's changing the face of the country and the values of the country. They support the communist shutdowns in the name of the, the virus that we have that has just destroyed their competition or destroyed the businesses. And just meanwhile, they've made mass profits. Uh, he's and a uh, shoe on That means fan. more power for them as well as for the government. In America, we're already a socialist country. You don't own your own land or property. You don't have a right to contract for work with workers to pay them just one or two dollars an hour if they want to work that, you know, be a be an usher or whatever. We've lost a lot of jobs in that way. 
you have wealth redistribution, which is really more like ghetto redistribution through progressive tax and social programs and affirmative action and all these things. You have the harsh hand of law, quote unquote law, coming down on innocent capital protesters because they are, the communism seeks to divide and conquer the whites against the, the people of color or the people of color really. <laughs> he was got to say the blacks. The whites. <laughs> and it's God. overwhelming the systems the, um, in order to destroy them and rebuild them in their image through immigration. You see the border is just being destroyed because they like to destroy and exploit the crisis and then rebuild it in their image. The government and the media are just filled, in my view, with communists from Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to, to Nikki Haley and even perhaps Greg Abbott over in Texas. I don't see capitalism as the opposite of communism. I see it really as good versus evil. So I see capitalism as, as just as many communists do as a stepping stone to communism because when in capitalism we start to do well. Hey, that's funny. That's also what Marx believed. Marx also thought com uh, capitalism was a stepping stone to communism. That's f oh, wait, hold on. Uh, do we have have we a dialectic materialist in our in in our midst? And then we forget God. You know the saying goes: tough times make strong make strong men. Strong men make good times. Oh my God! Good times make make uh, weak men, and then weak men make tough times. Oh my God! Wait, hold on. I'm sorry. So you guys know how recently I talked about that Joe Rogan Instagram post, and I talked about Julia Savola briefly, the, like, mega-Nazi? I actually saw some people on Twitter malding, saying that, like, I hadn't read his theory, and he wasn't actually, like, actually, he's, like, not really a fascist, and so on. And because I'm an idiot, I thought for a second, oh, goodness, I hope I didn't get anything wrong. So I looked down the thread, and then I looked at all the people making these claims, and yeah, he's a Nazi. He literally worked with the SS. They they were like, he didn't think women were worse than men. He thought that women were different than men. Different in that they can't vote or participate in civic society outside of child rearing. But they're not worse. They're just, di you know, like, he, he wasn't a fascist. When he was at that trial and he called himself a super fascist, that was like a meme, dude. He What, what he was saying was he was so fascist that he was more fascist than the fascist, the court uh, prosecutor knew about but that's not him being fascist like like it was shit like that and then i look and i saw like great bird accounts and shows like okay i don't know why i even bothered reading through this shit you know evola was wild man oh my god and that's when the communists like to strike so capitalism is supposed to be about freedom but you can't have freedom as i think john adams said without morality so freedom from it's supposed to be freedom from this degeneracy but they push pornography and all of that madness to just subvert families. Huh. It's about envy. It's about made up words and false ideals, things like racism and just division. Homophobia. Satan came as the angel of light and evil is subtle. It sounds good. It's an imitation of logic and morals. So that that's tracks communism. Merrick. Don't fall for it. Oh, Merrick, did you, did you see Perspective Philosophy's complete meltdown on Twitter? How he was talking about how just people should want um, punishment? Did you see that? I I'm telling you, man, strongly disliking me should be in the fucking VDS should be in the DSM because it predicts so many other mental illnesses. Holy shit. He, w he was like, uh, I don't understand the point of rehabilitating murderers. You can't unkill the victim. All you should want is punishment or something. He's like defending capital, capital punishment. Very philosophy. Much thinking. No, he's insane, Merrick. Yeah, 100%. As are all people who dislike me. Hmm. You got to thank you very much, James, for that opening statement as mm. well. And want to let you know, folks, Modern Day Debate is a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. And in fact, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button as we've got many we got more here? juicy debates to come, in particular at the bottom right of your screen. Not we are excited useful. as Stefan Molyneux and Destiny face off the last week of this month. You don't want to miss it. So hit that subscribe button and that notification bell for reminders. And with that, thank you very much, James. And Infrared, the floor is all yours for open discussion. Wait, Stefan Molyneux? He's the platform from everything. Okay. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I'll take I'll take pride in one thing. As much as I like debates, and I know I don't do them as often as you guys want, I'll try to work on that this month. But like, I never go I never go scraping the barrel. You know what I mean? Stefan Molyneux has been deplatformed from everything. He's like he's like a nobody now. He gets like five k views per bit shoot video. You know? Sure. Um. I want to be kind of brief. I don't want to ramble too much, but um, 
I think in the United States, and this is one of the things in infrared wanted to embark upon to kind of um, change people's Wait, perception you're is that here in the United States, I think there's a lot of confusion about what, what communism meant in other countries and how that Wait, would you're, apply here. Did he here. just refer to himself in the third several person? several reasons, there has come to be this kind of confusion in this country that uh, there's this association with communism and the experience of communism in Russia and China and the existing communist states okay. that survive today. And there's this association with that, with the current... Um, you know, the deep state and the democratic establishment and George Soros and the NGOs and um, the kind of Davos agenda for the Great Reset. There's this association between communism and these things, I think, because uh, in the United States, the Democrats are considered left and the Republicans are considered right. So people just have this idea that communism is just the like ultimate um, logical conclusion of the Democrats' current agenda. In reality, but I think when you um, actually communism study is right the experience in history of communism in the proper context, Oh, infrared is like his brand. He doesn't call himself infrared. Okay, okay, gotcha. I didn't know that. You will find that, um, well, for one, there is a historical uh, tension between communism and religion, but that wasn't uh, necessarily because communism is inherently anti-religious or even inherently forth. atheist. It was because the religious establishments that communists were um, going up against in their respective countries were deeply rotten and corrupt to the core. They defended the interests of the very corrupt ruling class. And, you know, many normal, uh, ordinary religious-minded people could even see that within these very same religious establishments, you had utmost cynicism and hypocrisy. These people that were occupying these uh, roles of religious power didn't actually even believe in it themselves. So there wasn't even really any authentic faith there. And so Sorry, for Gally. that reason, communists uh, had taken in the very beginning a negative stance toward religion. But as the experience of communism was able to mature more, Especially now. This this is true. Marx was Marx wasn't like anti religion explicitly. He was anti the way religion as an institution, organized religion, uh it was was used essentially to to promise workers a reward in heaven as a way of keeping them from getting too invested in a reward on earth, you know. The, the, it, Opium of the masses, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I, Marx wasn't like holistically anti theist, I don't think. Uh, though, though plenty of, you know, plenty of people on the left have been historically, it kind of varies. Uh, I think a certain understanding has uh, arrived at between communists internationally and religion, which allows for a communism that has room for faith. Not only does it have room for faith, but is actually able to rediscover itself in the history of uh, the world's great faiths. Uh, Frederick Engels, uh, Marx's uh, friend, if you don't know who he is, uh, toward the end of his life, he wrote about how in... Um, the early stages of Christianity, you found pretty much a, a very striking parallel to the socialist and communistic movement in Europe, that the principles and values of Christianity um, are strikingly similar to those of the communists. I mean, the President Putin of Russia has pointed out that the uh, the code of uh, communist builders, which was the Soviet um, oh. kind of like handbook for the Komsomol youth, uh, he said all of these things are already to be found in the Bible. So around the world, especially in Russia with its Communist Party and in Latin America and in the That's 1.25. And uh, I hope in the United States, um, communism has not only been proven to be perfectly compatible with faith, but they appear to even complement each other because uh, from the perspective of the world's great Ooh. religions, we can see the kind of corruption and, and decadence and inhumanity uh, that decadence. capitalism has brought upon the peoples of the world. And the way in which this has to be addressed economically and politically, um, seems to be very much compatible and uh, similar to what the communists are saying, right? Now, in regards to this question of equality, um, I think there's also confusion here, too, because communists never wanted to make everyone absolutely equal, because as Marx, Engels, and Lenin pointed out, people are inherently different. Some people have more skills than others. Some people are smarter. Some people are stronger. This so isn't people untrue. Are in general. So we don't, communists don't have this idea of making everyone equal. We just believe, um, as far as equality is concerned, no more than what was written in... Um, the Declaration of Independence, that we believe uh, that men and women were created equal, right? Which is what the founding fathers of the United States have said. And all that means is that insofar as the government is going to serve the interests of the people, we're going to have a government... Okay, that's not really true. So um, the founding promise of the United States is, isn't really sort of the broader doctrine of the left for a couple of reasons. Look, there's a lot of discourse to be had here on like the liberal notion of um of human rights uh and the fact the founders clearly did not think that men and women were created equal. And you could also point out that Hake also doesn't think people were created equal in that respect, clearly, because, you know, of his political beliefs. Shut up, Riverboat Jack. Um the 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 key distinction here is that Marx didn't really talk about equality. 
um he talked about um he talked about fa what was it not f fairness freedom freedom thank you he talked about freedom sorry uh, like i said cognitive decline arc he talked about freedom um the freedom for people to live their lives absent any uh malicious interference absent the control and exploitation of their bosses um and and i think marx believe and i think most of the people in my community believe that such an environment where people are free of both in both the positive and negative sense is one where people would be more or less equal now would everyone be exactly as smart as everyone else would everyone be equally capable in every way no of course not there would be huge gulfs in natural ability but i think that you know for example ceos being paid a thousand times as much as their workers that shit would not be happening in any system where people to fr were free to act um on their desires because only through exploitation could such gross inequality emerge so in in that case you know it's it's really about um not so much equality but the equality freedom could beget I mean, by for and of the people it's okay. not going is there much point in debating someone like Haik who speaks entirely in propagandist brainwash? No, and this is another one of the reasons why I don't have as many debates these days. I don't find it fun to talk to people like J.F. Garieppi, Stefan Molyneux, Infrared, Haik, or any of these guys anymore. They're just very dim, and they don't think about any of the stuff they say. They have their talking points, they read them at you from a piece of paper. Uh, you, can, you can make whatever dunks you want, but they barely even respond to them. They just look at you fish-eyed pupils pointing in both directions um you know what i mean it's low-hanging fruit and it's not even satisfying it's like punching one of those it's like punching one of those 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 like blow up clowns that just kind of like bounce back you know i would much rather talk to people who actually seem to like think about the things they believe because at least then you know if you catch them on a point you can see them stumble a bit you know i want them to suffer and bleed you can't milk blood from a stone, but if a person really cares about what they're saying... Like, remember the tanky debate that I had? This was the Joker tanky, the person who said that I would be selling pencils in a year, and it's been about a year now, and I'm the most powerful leftist on Earth. You know what I mean? Like, that guy, when I was talking to him, I had fun dunking on him, but, like, there really wasn't much going on. You know what I mean? It's not even necessarily that he's dim-witted. He might be, you know, perfectly intelligent. It's just, I, there wasn't really much actual discourse taking place. I would say something, and then he would say something. And if there was a relationship between those two periods of saying something, then that was kind of like a, a brief miracle. Um, it's something that I'll try to work on. Just at the moment, it just feels a little bit sad. Like, I actually get sad sometimes in those conversations because I feel like I'm talking with an NPC. Um, but I'll work on it. I'll try to find more people who actually give a fuck about what they believe. You know, we can dunk on them. We can dunk on them. Astral Clock Tower. The arguments there are a bit beyond me, I'll admit. I'm going to privilege these special interests like Amazon and Facebook and other monopolies over the ordinary man. Oh yeah, sorry, like Rob Knorr and CTV, you know? Like, stuff like that. Like, how am I supposed to engage with that? I'm sorry, I, I keep interrupting, but it's like, like, what am I supposed to do to engage with that stuff, you know? Sometimes I feel like a lot of people engage in these debates only for the kayfab, you know? Is that how you pronounce it? The kayfabe? Kayfabi? However it's pronounced. That, like, the wrestling, like, simulacrum of violence and performance, where, like, they just have fun with the yelling, like, the loud noises make them happy, you know? Like, like, they just kind of smile. Kayfabe, gotcha. They just kind of smile with the loud noises, you know? So it doesn't actually matter what I say. Well, we'll 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 find a way. We'll find a way to work in it. We will. We will. Man, this is Kitchen. our government, and we will should be treated accordingly. People like <gasps> Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, uh, wow. and other billionaires are not gods among men. They're not somehow more human than we are. They're not somehow more citizens of this republic uh, than we are. So in that regard, we just, as far as equality is concerned, believe that everyone should have a certain equality before the government, before the law that allows us to begin with equal opportunity. Now, we don't, we're not advocating for an equality of outcomes in life. If you look at communist states like China, you don't find uh, <laughs> communist you know, state. An equality of outcomes between people. And yet countries like China have done a very good job in being able to crack down on monopolies like the ones you're seeing with Amazon and, and, and the billionaire class. China is actually an example of a country with a government 
that isn't able to be infiltrated by the special interests, the corporations, and uh, with their special private agendas that are beyond the interests of the people. So I think we should be clear that communists don't want to uh, completely level society and make it equal. We just want people to be able to have a fighting chance. And that means people don't own land, they don't own homes. We want people to have to be able to own things because if people are able to own things in general, they're going to have a solid foundation from which to begin and begin as equals. Uh, are you an atheist? Um, my personal relationship to religion, I would say, is complicated. But uh, oh. in certain regards, I think I am an atheist, just in the sense that I don't like making assumptions about what God is and what God wants and, and who God is. But at the same time, I'm also someone who's motivated by a profound sense of faith and um, faith in something that I struggle There's to call no anything age, but shit, God or a God. But it, again, because religion has been misused so often in history, I, I want physical, to be very careful about lightning? Come on. Uh, my own relationship to faith personally. Um, where are you from? I'm just curious if you don't mind. Oh, yeah. My parents are from uh, Lebanon. Okay. Um, this is a quote from Marx, the Communist Manifesto by Marx and Eng Engels. Communism abolishes eternal truths. It abolishes all religion and all morality instead of constituting them on a new basis. It therefore acts in contradiction to all past historical experience. Is it, at, at root, is it not atheistic? Um, I, I wouldn't say so because uh, I think what Marx and Engels were trying to say in that regard is that communism doesn't mean to replace all these things with it's a new religion theory. and a new dogma and a kind of a new tradition. And I think that's very uh, important to you know keep in mind because uh, it's very easy to just assume that because you're having this new political movement and phenomena that it's going to somehow make a new religion and make a new thing like that. And also, I think there's oftentimes a mistranslation as far as the word abolish is concerned in a lot of these texts. So oftentimes the word ofhibon, which actually means sublate, which means to preserve while at the same time going beyond, is translated into abolish. And abolish means like to wipe out, right? And oftentimes Marx and Engels write about the sublation of things. Uh, which is not necessarily incompatible with their preservation in a new form, right? So the way I look at that and the way I would interpret that is that uh, communists don't want to abolish Christianity. They just want to give a new ex uh, ground for the expression of the authentic Christian faith without the corrupt religious institutions and establishments which deceive the people and trick people in the name of tapping into their real authentic faith. Um, what, what you're seeing live right now is the consequence of Infra's brand of communism for conservatives, wink, where, uh, where like every radical idea, like every radical social prescription that Marx or Engels would have made has to be like reinterpreted in, in such a way as to not be threatening, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, they didn't, they didn't want to abolish religion, bro. They were okay with organized religion. They just, bro, it was... <laughs> bro they were just like against like the bad kinds no um i think that for the most part marx was was quite sympathetic to people with religious beliefs i think that'd probably be the best way of putting it right like he didn't hate religious people he understood the the breath of life it gave uh many would you call islam organized religion y yeah right right I, I think so. It's not like there's a Pope of Protestantism, but that's organized. Who are just motivated by cynical interests of serving those in power or serving special interests or just plainly uh, trying to scam people into uh, making money. I've seen reports that, that China, for example, as recently as last year, they were clamping down, I think, on Christians as well as some other religions like Falun Gong or something like that <laughs> and saying we need Marxism, not religion, not Christianity. And I've just noticed that, uh, for example, Armenians, I've had some Armenian friends and they lived in a former communist country. And because of that, there is a lot of corruption and a lot of cheating and low trust society making uh, business practices with, um, with many Armenians because of that culture that basically where Life is not done. Life was once done in America with a handshake. You did not have to worry about a man that you shook hands with pulling a fast one on you. Whereas that's not the case in what? many of these uh, communist countries because it seems to it seems to be that communism does not understand or ex or else it purposely exploits the weakness and corruption and laziness of human nature because 
it has it has you <clears throat> where you are you get something that you didn't earn and you don't um you don't appreciate it you don't properly take ownership of it um in in regards to the situation what? of religion within china um what i never i never get the what 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 do you mean what what are we talking about Christians are not being cracked down on China for their religious faith. Now, there are various cults, among them the Falun Gong, which, which is a cult. It's not really a uh, historical or traditional religion. Uh Wait. I'm pretty sure China absolutely cracks down on religious expression. I'm pretty sure that happens. Does th am, I, am I wrong on that? I'm pretty positive that definitely, absolutely... First of all, we have, you know, Muslims in the Xinjiang province. And then, like, like yeah... Yeah, you can't even be a femboy on TV in uh in in China. Imagine. But it goes beyond that too. Like I think even, you know, not holistically, but often like they they they'll crack down on like Christianity and stuff like that. Um the Falun Gong are like a weird super weird religious cult, so I I don't hold any water for them. Um the Chinese government will crack down on those, but not simply because of uh, in the name of uploading Marxism versus religion. Now, Chinese society, you have to keep in mind, has historically not had a, uh, the same relationship to religion that uh, other societies do. The Chinese society has um, been mostly secular throughout its thousands of years of history, just in the sense that what? its way of relating to spirituality and religion, all those kinds of things, are done through the concrete bonds of civil society and, and statehood. So that's not really... What? S it's not religion because it's done through civil society and statehood? What? Does he know what the Catholic Church is? What? What, what does that even mean? An innovation of communism. It's just been true for China's history um, at large. But otherwise, Christians are free to practice their faith openly and freely within China. And um, events like the Taiping Rebellion in the 19th century within China, which was a Christian religious uprising against the Qing dynasty, was obviously very influential uh, in you know influencing the communist, the eventual communist movement that would come later. So um, I think there is an interesting relationship to Christianity there. But again, China is not a, a Christian country. Now, uh, in regards to this cynicism that prevails within Armenia, you have to keep in mind that after the collapse of communism, when the very same forces that conservatives within America are trying to struggle against, um, basically engage in the wholesale privatization of uh, the, so the former Soviet countries and you know, pretty much looted them and, and destroyed their traditions and tr trying to destroy their culture and set up all these NGOs and, and things like that to promote, the, uh, to promote a society that was more in line and more in within the interests of the American deep state. Um, what? Obviously, the situation in the post-communist states has been catastrophic, but this wasn't the fault of communists. It actually was the fault of the same um, global billionaires and oh, no. the global capitalist class who wink. are funding NGOs, people like George wink, Soros, wink, wink, people wink, wink. like uh, <laughs> you know, the uh, Ford yes! and, and the Rockefellers and all this kind of yes, people yes! who have this very- George Soros and the Rockefellers. Oh, you are playing to the audience right now. My God, what what an effective way of getting a Nazi to agree with what you're saying, dude. Holy shit. Ah, uh, yeah. What's what's representative of modern uh, neoliberal capitalism? You know. Ah, yes. Rockefeller and Soros. Jesus Christ. Very, they don't only have an agenda for the people of the United States and for this country, which I think to many Americans has been revealed. They had an agenda to completely overthrow the communist states and replace them with uh, liberal democracies. And that has been an absolute disaster for traditions and, and for culture and for religion. So much so that in countries like Russia, you find the Communist Party to be fundamentally uh, Orthodox Christian at its core. It's allied with the Orthodox Church because both recognize the forces of anti-communism to be a menace to religion within their country. So um, to me, regarding the promotion of laziness and selfishness, I think you have to keep in mind that in the 20th century, you had this kind of economic equality within communist states, primarily because they were coming from a backwards agrarian society and transitioning into an industrial society. So the goal was just to give people the minimum of just some kind of modernization. Now, when that came into a crisis, communist states responded to that in different ways. But the most successful way a communist state has responded to the issue is the, the path China took. And obviously, no one can really make the argument that in China, these vices of, you know, a lack of economic entrepreneurship and innovation and, um, uh, you know, uh, things like that is, is uh, being promoted. China is a very...
That's true. You could you could actually make the argument that China uncannily has almost exactly the same economic conditions as a capitalist country. Uh, if you really think about it, it's it is it is true. It is remarkably easy to defend uh to defend China to a, to a capitalist when everything in China is capitalist. That that does make it quite a bit easier. God, industrious, hardworking, innovative, competitive uh, society. I mean, this is no in and no lying way. and cheating. Sorry, <laughs> and lying and cheating. I don't know if that's well. I, I, I'm not sure. I think that's a culture of lying and cheating is common to all, you know, market societies or societies that are part of the global capitalist uh, world economy. Right. So uh, that's not something that's the fault of communism. I think that's more something that's the fault of the kind of dog eat dog world that we live. I, in. I can't listen to this, uh, dude. Well, China's just like all other market societies. You can't blame this on the communism that China has. It's like that in all market societies. What am I listening to? But China has seen profound cultural shifts, and specifically within the, the presidency of Xi Jinping, we're seeing a more of a promotion of morality instead of the kind oh of uh, nice. un, un, uh, yeah. unfettered economic growth for the sake of economic growth. There's more of a promotion uh, of moral values and kind of uh, cracking down on this kind of cynical dog-eat-dog uh, society. Dog-eat-dog. Uh, just a side note, you mentioned China. So, and you said we, you talk about we communists. And you distance yourself from Soros and all the Ford Foundation, who I I think of them as communists. You mentioned Xi Xi Jinping. I guess that is that the only communist who um, is a public figure that we would uh, recognize that you would consider a communist. No, there are several uh, within Latin America. There's people like Pedro Castillo. There's the leader of the Russian Communist Party, uh, Zayuganov. There's other communists throughout Eastern Europe, uh, leaders of communist parties, and you obviously have communist states like Vietnam. Uh, Laos, Cuba, and then also Venezuela uh, under the presidency of both uh, Hugo Chavez and Nicolas Maduro. So there's many uh, people I would consider socialist or communist. Um, Anybody in America? Um, it's a tricky question within America because I think that there has been a big confusion because of the history of the Cold War and the left-right division. Leftists within America and liberals have adopted the communist Ouch. identity, not because they have any connection to communism globally, but because they just want to kind of spite the right wing, similar to how people adopt the identity of Satanism. To what, what does that mean without any connection to it globally? What is that? Communism isn't an ethnicity. You don't need to have a fucking lineage in it. It's an ideology. What, is, what does that mean? Spite Christians, but within the United States, we have figures, socialist or left-wing figures, that I would consider to be more aligned with uh, the global communists. We would like uh, people like Jimmy Dore, people like <laughs> Jesse Ventura. <laughs> Jimmy Dore doesn't even call himself a socialist. He's pro-capitalism. I guess so is Haas, so... That's not really surprising. Yeah, like, uh, quick, quick, name, name, uh, top, top three American communists. Go, uh, uh, J Jimmy Dore, uh, okay, uh, J uh, Jimmy, uh, Glenn Greenwald, uh, uh, Michael Tracy, uh, D Donald Trump. No, too far. D no, Donald Trump. Donald Trump Jr. D like, fuck, Jesus Christ, absolutely beyond parrot. T Tucker Carlson. T yeah, Tucker Carlson. Sure. Uh, figurehead figures like uh, Caleb Maupin, who is himself a devout uh, Christian, while at the same time being yes! a socialist and a communist. You have people like, you know, Michael Parenti. And this is a new and growing movement, which I think uh, in the future uh, is going to be much, uh, much larger than it is now. But for now, unfortunately, the American left is dominated um, by forces subservient to the billionaire class and to what we would consider the forces of uh, American capitalism. You know, um, I think of communism as exploiting the natural fissures between society. I've heard that they, for example, race in America, uh -huh. they divide the races, they divide, again, worker from worker from boss or whatever, so-called rich from so-called poor, when men from women, just the LGBTIQ madness. Um, I don't see you guys, and I mentioned this at the beginning, I don't see you and the infrared people as being so viciously anti-white, so anti, explicitly anti-Christian anyway. Um, how are you going to get, how are you going to get your 
how are you going to get communists to become reasonable? <laughs> well, I think you just have to look at the name. So communism, it comes from this common root of common, right? It's about finding what is in common. And that's why for me, as Americans, Actually, uh, communism was named, uh, the root word is common because Marx felt that after he invented communism, it would soon be all over the world. You know, he says, we'll call this communism because soon it will be in every country. Every state will be communist. If we're going to be communist, we're going to promote communism. We're going to try and promote what is in common between the people. We don't want to divide people or accelerate or promote these current frivolous cultural divisions that are being promoted. Okay, right now he's saying racism is a frivolous cultural division. Again, this is what I mean by right wing, okay? It's it's like he's very communist because he's pro-China, the most communist state. Uh, and, and and now systemic racism is, is being relegated to... Uh, meaningless cultural divisions. This is what I mean. He is a conservative first. Voted by the media to distract people from their real enemies. We want the American people to come together to be reconciled with one another so as they can one focus their attention on their real enemy, which is the current American establishment, the current billionaire class, the current oligarchy, and the current uh, monopolies, especially in, in our particular, uh, the big tech monopolies, whose power is so unprecedented that if allowed to continue, they may very well lead to the destruction uh, of our republic and of any semblance of uh, democracy. What? These unaccountable big tech companies, which are seemingly above the law and, and don't have to answer to anyone and who aren't even being regulated in, in any capacity. So we want people to come together. We don't want to keep dividing people along these identities. Now, at the same time, we can recognize that there are racial tensions. I, I, li I like how... <laughs> uh, I, I, I like how he was like, um, you know, we, we need to... We need to stop focusing on petty cultural divides like racism and focus on what really matters, which is big tech destroying the country. In this country, um, there is a historical and ongoing, uh, in, our, in my view, injustice committed against America's black people because uh, huh? they have been denied the post-Civil War uh, right of 40 acres and a mule, right? And that's not you know, uh, some kind of total economic equalization. It's just the, the minimum of Bring having a solid a little foundation little. with which to build their own community. That, I think that's the last thing they need. Sorry to interrupt. Right. I think that's, that's the last thing they need. About. And yeah. sorry to interrupt, but yeah. they've been they've been given and given and given. It's been debilitating. I, I, I don't think they have, I don't, I'm not speaking so much of a handout to make them dependent on the U.S. government, which I think <laughs> the Democrats have played a part in trying to, oh in order God. to secure the, them as an electorate. What I'm speaking at is some kind of fundamental just ability to own something. Co communist speaking to a Nazi. I feel like racism exists and we should probably do reparations. Nazis like, uh, I don't think they deserve any more. We've given those people enough. No, no, no. I'm not talking about like a handout or anything, sir. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Marx would be rolling in his graves if he saw his loudest advocates talking this way with the literal ideological antithesis to communism. He's, no, 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 not not like a handout. They, they wouldn't be like welfare queens or anything. We, we you know, just like uh, ownership. From which they can build economically. It's, right? Yeah, it's and pathetic. That's yeah. not, that doesn't take the form of just, you know, being dependent on the government or being dependent on welfare. Actually, if you look at the history of the United States, this ability for Americans to go and, and get their own land was the foundation of American prosperity and economic prosperity. Yeah. You had the, um, I forget the specific name of the act in the 1800s, which allowed Americans who were westward to be able to just pretty much the Homestead Act. Yeah. yeah. These okay. things were integral in, for the prosperity and uh, economic flourishment of the United States. People were able to have their own land. And from there, they could proceed and, and build something. And then later on, you had the populists and the Farmers Alliance who were struggling to have some kind of land reform and break up the monopolies and, you know, have uh, the government be able to regulate electricity and uh, things like this so that I got monopolists you. couldn't use it to, to okay, hurt the please, little guy. And, and, please uh, let me talk. Let me say the next stupid thing. In, my, his chance. Spend an in hour my view, the, the commie capitalism has made that harder for people to afford things. I think blacks, just as much as anybody, have the ability to, to gain wealth in this country, but that ability definitely is limited because of the subsidization 
of subsidizing so-called education and the corruption of education well, has made people and the subsidizing of housing and the minimum wage those of all those along with what you just said have made things harder for normal people to get along they, and they have two they have men and women working which has only made people uh, able to afford more, okay but they- so this is what i mean like there were people in my subreddit after I was on with Hake on that that like panel show uh, with Dylan. There were people saying like you should get a debate with Hake. I ask you like what would I what would I do like what would I even say with Hake? Like like wh- what would what would even take place? Debate what his 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 synaptic responses? Should I like jangle some keys and like get involve him in that? Like what like what do I say? You know make fun of him for two hours. I'd be bored after five. There's only so much you can say. Real takedowns, like really, really funny takedowns are, are, are ones where there's enough like back and forth and interplay. Like RGR, okay? Like RGR I thought was a really fun takedown because RGR, Riley, isn't stupid. She's just a bit fucking insane uh, on, on, that particular, on, that, on that particular subject, uh, it seems. Um, and uh, and and she was actually engaging with what I was saying. Her emotional involvement was meaningful. Like with Hake, I might as well just like, I might as well just find like an AI text generator that that has fed a bunch of Nazi algorithms to itself. You know, like a bunch of Nazi text posts in the algorithm, and then just like debate that. Like I'll say like, hey, you know, I think socialism would be good because of this, that, and the other. And then it would say like, blacks give too much welfare, queen degenerate. And then I would be like, well, I don't actually think that. See, here's the issue with that framing. I don't actually think that morally there's anything wrong with behavior as long as it doesn't hurt other people. Or contrib-. And then it'd be like, uh, Jew, Jew, Soros, Jews, Soros. And I'd be like, well, no, I don't quite feel that way. Like, I'm like what, am, what am I doing? <laughs> Jesus Christ. What am I doing here? Fuck. I didn't, I didn't get a bachelor's degree for this. Nobody, anybody with a GED, anyone who's passed elementary school, okay, would, would run out of things to say, I feel. Any level of education, basic literacy in the English language entitles you to better conversations than that. Then they just raise the prices. And so, so men and women feel like they don't really have to, but they feel like they almost have to work, both of them. And then they're separated from their children. It's a, it's a, such a corrupting influence. Has it, has it not been, just one quick question, I know yeah. I'm adding things on top. Has it not been the case that communists exploited the divisions and balkanization and all that stuff uh, in order to create a crisis and take power? Um, no, so I think I'll, I'll just answer in order, just two things. What is that, what is the that first thing mean? is that I do agree that there are current monopoly impediments here goes, here goes to goes general Americans' hour. ability to uh, flourish economically, but I don't, I don't know if I agree that those things are necessarily the minimum wage and the subsidization of housing and education, although those those being enamored in all the bureaucratic red tape and corruption that they are definitely do need to be improved and made more efficient. I I, I agree. But in general, I think the number one obstacle is actually the big monopolies, whether in the form of, um, you know, in housing, you have financial institutions like BlackRock that are buying up America's homes. Um, and mass. And what you call uh, commie capitalism, I think I would call it, and this is something that people have referred to in America, as a kind of socialism for the rich. I mean, uh, the, the, the mainstream media. Imagine calling yourself a theory purist. Imagine calling other people rad libs and ever using that terminology. Oh my god. Yeah, 10 years off my life, just like that. Instantly, closer to death. Media tells us yeah. we live in a free market capitalist society, but clearly you have all these special grants and favors the government does for the one percent and for the monopolies, right? It, it it gives them subsidies, it gives corporations tax breaks and subsidies the average American doesn't have ac- access to. There's tax loopholes that allow special interests to be able to game the system and and basically rig the system. So I do agree, we do have a kind of socialism for the rich. Uh, all I'm advocating for as a communist is that we have a socialism for the people um, instead. And to me. Now, the second thing about um, the, the, is highlighting the difference, communists haven't tried to create crisis uh, in order to seize power. They were rather the ones that seized power as a result of crises that no one else was able to uh, overcome. For example, in China, you had the um, invasion by the, Jap- uh, the Japanese, and communists <laughs> had a very important part in the War of Liberation and leading the Chinese people against uh, the Japanese imperialists. 
I, and the communists were the most effective in being able to rally uh, the Chinese people and unify, actually, the Chinese people rather than divide them uh, to create uh, okay. the People's Republic. It's not really the communists that were dividing people. It was their enemies that were promoting um, various divisions between them in order for the ruling class of the time to be able to maintain its grip on power. So, again, I think the primary goal of communists is to unify people. But when we unify people, you're going to see the establishment um, – the mainstream media, the special interests, uh, the institutions, the NGOs, the think tanks, all these kinds of uh, universities, they're all going to rally together and try to stop it. So conflict will inevitably be generated. But like that's Trump? not be because it's what we want. What do you think of Trump and Tucker? Oh. Well, here's what I'll say about Trump. Um, I'm obviously not the biggest fan of Trump. I think that he made many mistakes. And I think the primary mistake that Trump ended up making was that he, had, he was completely beholden to the Republican establishment. And I don't think Trump really had any independent direction. I mean, the media was like... What's wrong with the phrase socialism for the rich? There's nothing wrong with using it as like a catchy way of appealing to people, but uh, people like infrared LARP is the most insufferable theory purists. If you're the kind of person who will call others rad libs for pointing out that Marx didn't completely disbelieve in electoralism or pointing out that like, uh, you know... China isn't like a communist state or whatever. Like if you like the, the the issue is that like infrared doesn't like Bernie Sanders. These people talk about Bernie Sanders like he's a rad lib masquerading and cheapening the name of socialism. So for them to go ahead and use the most libby fucking phrase imaginable, socialism for the rich, to describe the basic subsidization and tax incentive programs that any capitalist state will use to privilege its bourgeois, like it's just, it's such a rad libby thing to say. Even I don't use terminology like that because I think it's incredibly reductive and stupid. Um, and I don't want socialism to be associated with like w w subsidies. Like that's not socialism. What, what the, a better term would be welfare state for the rich. Welfare state for the rich, austerity for the poor. That would be a better thing to say because we do have that. That also wouldn't cheapen socialism's name labeling him as a fascist and a Nazi. I don't necessarily agree with I that. I maybe used it a couple um, of times. I don't know it's what Trump's funny, personal funny for ambitions or goals or loyalties were, but I can't appreciate the fact... Yeah, but Vosh, you do the same code switching when you talk to rightoids. You have to, like, speak their language. I don't think that's really applicable here. First of all, Haik won't change any of his beliefs in this. And second of all, Haik is a Nazi. There's no reason to code switch to try to convince a Nazi to your positions. If, if you're a communist and you're ever going to talk to a Nazi... And their opening line is, I've heard you're not as anti-white as other, you know, people of your kind, uh, and you're less in favor of degeneracy. This, that, that's not a good thing. <laughs> you're, that's, that's quite a bad thing, I'm afraid, actually. There's, there's a difference between code switching and, like, just appealing to them. And, like, listen to how nice he's being. Listen to how, like... No, no, code switching is an appropriate term sometimes for him. It's just, like, he's being very cloying. that he did kickstart a movement um, of Americans who were fed up with the system and who were fed up with the establishment, and he gave them a sense of hope. Now, do I think Trump, do I believe Trump himself personally is going to be able to make do on the expectations he's given to his movement? I don't necessarily think so. And that's why as communists, we don't necessarily want to go against uh, the Trump movement and, and oh Trump God. people. We rather want to um, show them that there's a more effective way to fight this establishment um, than Trump can. I mean. Trump, for example, um, was so, I agree, he was very much treated unfairly by the media. He was very much, uh, you know, lied about and, and so on and so on. But at the same time, um, I think as communists, we want to propose a more effective and better way of combating. As a communist, we don't want to fight against fascism. D didn't he argue with me that Biden was a fascist or was that another? No, that was, that was the other guy. Did he, something, he, I feel like he's. That was Nico House. I feel like he said it too, though, hasn't he? I, I don't really remember. But, um... Yeah. Pretty sure House said it too. Yeah, me too. So, like, you know. I'm pretty sure he's also said, like, the necessity of fighting against moderate Dems. I wonder why he doesn't apply that same standard to fucking... to Republicans. Combating the same uh, forces that were demonizing Trump better than Trump himself could, right? And also part of that means um, making more alliances, right? We want to reach out and make alliances with leaders of the black community fed up with the establishment. Because believe it or not, uh, the black community is not, you know, uh, as loyal to the Democrats as oh, the mainstream media is trying to say. 
there's many black people who are fed up with the democratic establishment. Many Latinos are fed up with it, right? So I think we want to reach out and make even more broad alliances with uh, these groups. Um, he, listen, he's literally in a conversation about whether or not he likes Trump, refusing to condemn Trump while simultaneously saying that there are plenty of POCs who are fed up with the Dems. Like, it's so blindingly obvious who's on his side. Maybe in ways that the current Trump movement hasn't uh, been too successful in doing. I've noticed that the um, the communist people who I call communists, the people that who commonly think of the Antifa Black Lives Matter, and I have a broader definition than than maybe others, uh, they exploit the anger of the so-called minorities. You already said this. It seems like with this, with this uh, version of communism that you have, you want to exploit the anger of everybody. You want to not exclude the whites. And it seems ripe for that because whites are getting angry as well at what's going on. They've been demoralized, lack of morals, and they see the injustice against, explicitly in many cases, against them and men too. So I don't know, you might, you might be successful in this. Madness. Yeah, I think um, the first thing I want to say is that, you know, to me, the... Okay, there's one thing that, that Haas can say here and be correct. And everything that isn't this thing is the incorrect thing to say, okay? It's incredibly simple, okay? Class injustice affects us all. I think we all have a right to be angry. That's it. If you actually care, it, like, don't, don't, like... Like, that's all you have to say. That's it. That's the only thing that you have to say. Anything past that, to me, is a massive rhetorical failure and possibly an ideological one, depending on what else you say. So-called Antifa, at least within the United States, they're very clearly foot soldiers of the democratic establishment. Okay, that was the wrong thing to say. We did indeed find a thing that was rhetorically and ideologically incorrect. Thank you. You had the easiest layup in the fucking universe, and and this and 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 this was the the direction that we took it. Thank you very much. All right, nice. <laughs> one one answer. Is he reactionary or just trying to sell socialism via right wing grift? He's reactionary. Haas is a conservative. It's just all part of the Nas bullshit. I need to make another video on this. The, it, the the broader project is taking disillusioned left-leaning people and moving them to the right. Uh, Haas has communist aesthetics that will appeal to left-leaning people, but then he'll talk about how the Dems are actually worse than the Republic. I'm, I'm making general points. I don't know if he specifically said this, but Dems are worse than Republicans uh, uh, because, you know, they, they mislead the public and, you know, Antifa are bad and the left is bad. And actually there's nothing wrong with preserving traditional culture and et cetera, et cetera. You know, China's totally left-leaning guys, nothing fascist about this. And eventually you do sort of ideologically what China did politically, which is you use communism as a kind of rhetorical framework to justify fascism. And China is absolutely a he doesn't play into racial animosity at all, does he? No, but he downplays, like, the legitimacy of racial conflict pretty often, I'm pretty sure. Like, he, he does do that. Um, now, Black Lives Matter as an official organization. Yeah, he's done it this convo. Soros, he, called, that. he called systemic racism a meaningless uh, uh, culture war divide. I mean, that's, that's pretty bad right there. Um. And obviously, it's very it's very ambiguous and mysterious to say the least uh, about what interests exactly they're serving. But all I could pretty much say is that there are legitimate grievances within the black community. But I oh, think those grievances not. are being turned against the Democrats uh, themselves. And as for Antifa, I think the the so called Antifa phenomenon they're, they're calling themselves communists and they're waving communist flags. But this isn't because they're actually communists. It's because they're trying to instill fear in conservatives. They're trying to provoke fear in the people that the so-called deplorables that are against the democratic establishment. And because most Americans, and this is a result of the Cold War, have fearful attitudes toward communism, um, these people are trying to exploit that fear and, and make themselves into a boogeyman, right? Now, as far as the anger and, and grievances uh, that white people or, or men are experiencing, I don't necessarily think this is because uh, white people or, uh, or men are necessarily oppressed, but I think oh. that um, many working class people happen to be white, happen to be men, okay. many ordinary, regular people. And one of the ways that the establishment is trying to sow division between people is by, you know, um, trying to, you know, target or, you know, sow racial divisions and, and make people feel bad or guilty because they're white and, and promote all this bullshit about how we have to tear down the you know, statues of founding fathers. And, ah, uh, you know, 
this is this is this is the the racial line he's willing to meet on. He won't say that like racism is bullshit or whatever. Uh, he'll just say like any social effort at fighting racism is part of the elite distracting us. You know, that's yeah. all this kind of stuff. So I do agree that there's legitimate anger there, but I don't think that we should sow more of the division and more of this uh, tension. I think we should recognize it as an attempt by those in power to divide people, right? And what communists want to do is we want to bring people together um, because, of the, because we the think that they're being common. distracted with this infighting <laughs> from their real enemy. And that real enemy is the American establishment and the monopolies. It's I don't know. the bourgeois. But he's, he's such a fake fucking commie, dude. It's the bourgeois. That's the enemy. Not the American elite because it has nothing to do with America. There are plenty of capitalist countries. He has to say American because China also has bourgeois. Um, and, uh, and, and he has to say monopolies because China does have some anti-monopoly protections, except funnily enough against itself. Um, yeah, but they, he, he won't actually name. Yeah. He's, he's using language that could be mistaken for, for like the Jewish question. I, I think it's deliberate, you know? Um, the 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 American elite, you know, the the industrialists, the global, like that, all all that stuff. This this is language, like, uh, you know, Nazis will will sort of code with anti-Semitism. Um, I don't know if he's doing it deliberately or not, but I have no reason to believe that he wouldn't, given his fucking Soros Roth Soros Rothschild shit earlier. But like, it's just he's so fucking uninterested in actually promoting a materialist view of the world. Like, because he he will not name the bourgeois. He just, he keeps like tiptoeing around it. Oh, I that is there is some truth to that, but um, the enemy is within. It's a good versus evil, and yeah. like anything, anybody with anger is gonna be gonna end up working against their own interests. I don't think that that black oh Rockefeller black not really Rothschild, has sorry Rockefeller legitimate grievances. At least none of that they're none that they're uh, crying about, none that we hear crying about in the mainstream, at least. Well, the 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 black people that are being given representation in the mainstream don't necessarily represent um, the grievances of the black community. I do think uh, the black community has many legitimate uh, grievances. Can you but, name one? Yeah, oh. sure. Um, uh -huh. They don't have enough self determination and independence. They're ruled by police departments that <laughs> aren't really connected to the community, much in the same way that rural people in the United States have been, you know, since the 90s and the 2000s, especially ruled by these federal agencies that are completely disconnected with them, right? So are you aware? Hold on. I think that was okay. Yeah. So he brought up a good point, which is that uh, a ton of black people live under the thumb of like restrictive police occupation. But, but you know, basically, we're using sort of evocative language here, but I'll, I'll take it. Um, and then he's pointing out that and it's true, that a lot of rural people's livelihoods is completely determined by like the abstract bureaucratic uh, decision making of federal agencies with regards to subsidies or like a bunch of other stuff, state and federal, um, that 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 control because like rural communities don't have much locally to pull on, so they they're kind of reliant in a lot of ways on what goes on beyond the confines of their community. They're they're they're. Does that make sense? That was actually an okay point. I'll take that. And it was a good way of relating because Hake will defend rural communities because they're coded white. Aware of the amount of crime that's happening in, in these communities. Of and course. there's black I, I'm there not, I'm mothers not who are begging for more police. Right, but I'm not denying that there's a, a reality of crime. I just think it's a vicious cycle in which the economic conditions that are promoting crime, uh, okay. namely from this wholesale robbery and scamming of America's uh, black population by the Democrats, it specifically <laughs> reel it in reel reel it in a little bit farther just just a little just a little bit farther oh my god it's a bipartisan issue oh my god okay well <laughs> all right that was that was good that was pretty funny that was well timed it was comedy gold uh, leads to the end, you know, the attempt by the Democrats that seems at least clear to me to target families, right, and make families right. harder to start. This creates a vicious cycle, which then leads also to a vicious, very vicious form of 
police repression. Now, I do agree that much of the so-called Black Lives Matter protests were not coming from uh, black people, but were coming from uh, Come. The, the, actually primarily white uh, leftists who were serving the interests of the Democrats. I think it's because... Oh, my God. He can't, he, he can't stop. He can't stop. He can't refrain. There was an issue with BLM protests having, you know, white agitator, Antifa, whatever guys who were just super horny to throw Molotovs or, you know, like that was a bit of an issue. But like overwhelmingly, the people who attended BLM protests were people there in good faith for BLM. And how the white agitators at protests are not serving the... I mean, he said that the Antifa is like a, a tool of the Democrats. So, I mean, he's going to conservative talking point his way up the democrats have tried to twist the legitimate grievances of america's various minorities by sending and Antifa. turn them into a way that will serve their own interests even though the democrats are the ones who have betrayed and robbed these same people uh, for decades now our solution to that isn't to focus on the anger and, and and you know aggravate grievances the white outside agitator trope goes back to slave days and kkk talking points yeah yeah i know it, it does yeah the idea that like like white race traders are mixing in with the agitated black people and stirring things up that black people are normally fine and dandy calm and a-okay with how things are going it's just these you know uh these these goody two-shoe whites that are rolling on in there um and and you know starting up trouble that's that's a pretty old talking point i just i don't think it's that evocative in in the blm yeah yeah, the hijacking the movement. It's a really good way of delegitimizing a movement because all you have to do is say, oh, well, they've been hijacked by these guys. And like, then you don't have to respond to any of their talking points, you know? Like, oh, BLM? Oh, well, they're doing this because they've been hijacked. Talk to me when they're a real movement that really represents the black population. And of course, such a thing will never happen because there's no way of empirically determining when you've reached that point. So it's, yeah, it's just an ongoing sort of cycle. But find a way that we can come together in order to address our common problems, we don't really want necessarily people to be angry. We just want people to feel powerful enough, to feel brave enough, and to feel bold enough to stand up what's for what's right and to fight for their own republic, right? To fight for republic what? by, for, and of the people. Because this establishment, these corporations, uh, and our deep state <laughs> is nowhere to be found in our constitution. It's an overgrowth right. on our republic that was not intended by our founding fathers and what uh, patriotic communism does to a motherfucker to devour uh, our republic itself now i want to make a prediction i'm looking at the media and i'm looking how they're promoting people like megan markle and it seems to me they're trying to prepare her for some kind of uh, political existence or presence and i find it a nightmare that it's a possibility that our elites are planning on dismantling our republic and basically in installing uh, i don't know what British he's talking what is he talking about us, right so Wait, what, 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 is he, what is he talking about? Prepping her to be... What? What are we talking about? I'm not familiar with all the... What is it? QAnon talking points? Merkel? The German... Who, what? I, I, I'm, I, I don't know what this refers to. I'm sorry. I don't even have any commentary to make. The lady who married the prince? What does she have to do with anything? He's talking about installing the British crown in the US. Who, why is... What? Okay. Fucking loony bins, man. Well, I think this is something we really have to keep in mind. And it's you, something, as a communist, I want to get the word out on. You mentioned fighting for what's right. How are communists... What about fighting fight for, for what's, what's right? If they have white. no... God, no morals, no absolute standard. They just do it by any means necessary. Is that not a communistic line? Well, I, or is that I just in America? Religious, by any means necessary. Yeah, well, re religious faith is not dogma. If, if we had an absolute standard, it wouldn't be faith. We wouldn't need to have faith. We would be able to have a guarantee. The reason we have faith is we're... What? Wh if we had an absolute standard for religion, they wouldn't need faith. What the... F fuck does that mean is he talking about a state religion what I, I don't even know what he's talking about here if we could objectively prove god well wouldn't wouldn't that be cool if we could do that putting our trust in something we don't necessarily know right and i don't think communists uh 
I don't think, I don't believe the majority of communists are without a God. Um, even as an atheist for most of my adult life, I have come to um, see the value and importance of the feeling of God at the very least, right? Um, the what? presence of God, right? So I don't necessarily, it's not that communists are against uh, What? Is he an atheist or is he spiritual? You can only, <laughs> well, whatever, I don't. God, it's just that we're reluctant to focus too much on it because it can very easily be twisted to serve the opposite. Now, the, the very religious, the great religions of the world warn about this. They warn about how people um, do things in the name of God, say things in the name of God, uh, while in reality serving Satan, right? It's the, right. you yourself pointed out earlier that, um, I forgot exactly what it said, but evil uh, does disguise itself in the form of good. And yep. As beautiful as I consider the great religions of the world, it's precisely because of how good, true, and beautiful that they are, that evil forces have used them for completely opposite purposes, right? So that explains really historically the reluctance of communists to really uh, get really deep into the religion. But we saw in the Soviet Union how, for example, uh, when the Germans in no, I think historically the reason why communists have been an, uh, antagonistic towards the church is because the church is usually in line with the state and the bourgeois in presenting an ideological narrative that dissuades the working class from working to achieve their just reward while on earth. It is not because communists were like, oh, well, these are the bad churches but if we had good churches what a liberal response jesus christ no it's it's because it's it's it ideologically disenfranchises the working class the protestant work ethic is literally like the the mandate of the church and historically you can look at examples where the um the 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 prescriptions of the church the preaching was done in line with that which served the interests of the state or of the the mercantile class back during the Middle Ages, you know? Like, uh, or, or another example would be how slaves that were brought to the United States were taught Christianity because Christianity teaches you to keep your head down, your nose to the ground, and work hard to guarantee a spot in heaven. Which is a really, really uh, convenient thing to convince a slave Oh, just, you know, don't fight back, whatever, you're a slave, that sucks, yeah, but in heaven, we'll all be equal, you know, says the slave master while, like, counting his coin, yeah. Um, yeah, this is a very anti-materialist take. This is actually quite an ide an ide ideological take here, which is funny. Um, invaded their country. They rediscovered the Russian Orthodox faith. What idealism does faith, to an MF? Divorced from the institutional corruption of the church. Um, which I think was a more authentic and uh, real form of faith than the one that existed before communism, right? So we have to keep, bear in mind, communism is not incompatible with religion. I think you can even go so far as to say that communists merely want to do good in the world. We don't want to make heaven on earth, but we want to be okay. good people in this world. We don't only want to focus on the afterlife in heaven because this world does matter. What we do in this world uh, matters. If we didn't believe that, then how could we how could we condemn and recognize the evil of what our elites are doing? We clearly see that this is evil because we know that what happens in this world matters. I think that, I think that okay. everybody sees evil, but they're not good at diagnosing it, nor are they good at coming up with the right solutions for it. They end up creating more evil. It's like, a, it's like an imitation of logic. Because Karl Marx himself said it, athe his Marxism cannot be conceived without atheism. And well, I think yeah, it's more. Yeah. I think it's more than you're letting on. It's more. Well, here's here's that, that's here's, true. Here's, here's ah, Hake ha ha has read more theory. Uh, he, he's than than Haas here apparently. Uh, uh Hake is act is correct here. Haas is very specifically downplaying, uh, the the criticisms of religion brought about historically by communists. Calling him out, Comrade Hake, holding holding the radlib revisionist infrared or Haas or whatever to account confusion around this is because historically religion had taken the form of philosophy in Marx's time, right? Marx wasn't thinking about religion beyond philosophy. And in the philosophical sense, Marx was an what? atheist. He did wholeheartedly uh, reject religion. But that's because, in my view, the meaning of religion became perverted by philosophy and what was once an authentic and material form of faith, right? Just L This is what I mean by he doesn't understand the words that he's using. He is just desperately throwing out anything that sounds vaguely leftist, any terminology, 
uh, in, in an attempt to post talk justify this. He can't come off as too anti-religious because his broader goal is like moving people to the right, you know? Or goal is maybe too strong a word. The broader, like, effect of his advocacy is to move rightward people who think themselves on the left. Um, so he can't come off too anti-religious because it's, you know, it's pretty central to a lot of conservative thought in the, in the States. Um, but he's, he's just like throwing everything to the wall and seeing what sticks based in feeling and intuition and, and true faith and conviction uh, turned into dogma and it turned into this kind of absolute guarantee that's uh, that I view is inherently corrupt. But I don't I don't think that that you can reduce people's religious feelings to that. I think people's religious feelings is authentic. Marx also agreed it was authentic. Marx called religion the heart. Wouldn't he be trying to move right wing people to the left with this? I kind of do the same, but less Marx because I do not read. No, Shu, there's a critical distinction. The distinction is that Haas's posturing and aesthetics appeal to the left, but then his arguments give leeway to the right. There's a bit that, like, Tucker Carlson doesn't move, uh, you know, right-leaning people to the left. At the end of the day, it's, it's your conclusions that matter. Like, what do you actually spend your time doing? And he can use whatever language he wants. He can appeal to whatever crowd he wants. But at the end of the day, his, his like, political prescriptions are conservative. Um, so it's like the, the the classic way of moving people over is use the enemy's aesthetics to reach your conclusions. So, for example, Bo of the Fifth Column does this brilliantly. Bo of the Fifth Column has got like that rural, like redneck kind of vibe going on. He like films himself in a garage, you know, he doesn't use unapproachable academic language. Uh, uh, but all the shit he says is super fucking based and super well put together and intelligent. So that's a very effective way of moving people over. And then on the other hand, you know, you've got Tucker Carlson, uh, who will posture with left aesthetics, complaining about the elites, the wealthy, et cetera, et cetera, but reach conservative conclusions, anti-immigration, anti-degeneracy, anti, like, uh, you know, uh, multiculturalism, so on. So in this case, it's the aesthetics content uh, divide. And for Haas, it is undeniably... Uh, left aesthetic right conclusion for me i have gamer aesthetic left conclusion which i don't know has some some merit i think art of a heartless world he said religion was the only way people were able to give expression to their authentic humanity right now whether or not you believe that in building a more human world what do i have lamau you have trad wife uh trad wife e-girl uh shit poster aesthetic to left content which is a valuable and powerful niche thank you for your service comrade world religion is going to disappear we can all agree that there is something fundamentally good about religion um marx himself was making the point that the problem is not religion the problem uh. is th our current world and the evils that we associate with religion are a reflection of the evils of our world right so it's, it's, it's kind of more of a philosophical issue that shouldn't be taken at, at face value because his historical experience shows, and this is especially true in 2021, that in no way is um, religion incompatible with communism. Have you noticed that males who are communists have a, like a female version of logic where it's always excuse after excuse. It's not responsibility. Like the best, the solution for the black community is responsibility. It's not Oh, they have these grievances. The police, the, the police are not the black community's problem at all. Well, here's have what you I'm noticed saying. that they have like a, yeah. a female mindset. Ex yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would just, yeah, I would yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I get it. First I thing guess. I want to say is I do consider it an important feature of manhood that we recognize we're not going to insert ourselves in other people's business, right? So <laughs> I think black people themselves are best equipped in being able to diagnose their own problems and what those are. And I agree that the white left is trying to speak on behalf of them and, you know, make excuses or whatever. I agree. They, uh, they're they trying to speak for black people, right? But, but that's what he's accusing kind of, you of uh, doing. I guess you're calling it female logic. Yeah. Um, I think uh, you, don't really, you don't really find communist men in this country, in the United States, all that uh, much. But that's also because... And this is historically true, and, and this is actually true in the ex-communist states, the ruling elites, and this is especially true for this more overly socialized and more urban people, right? The students and people don't really work with yeah. their hands. They tend to be more, um, less manly, to say the least. And interesting. Remember, this is uh, Ha's Two Holes Infrared.
this is this is this is from the 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 most stunting fucking lady killers on all of Twitch. Uh, <laughs> the the most empty performative masculinity on the fucking platform. Jesus Christ. Interestingly, in Eastern European countries, those are those people are actually the right wingers, and it's the communists who are more conservative and down to earth, and, and so on and so on. Uh, I think this issue, as far as manhood is concerned, um, it is yeah, it's really I guess as a communist, it is embarrassing to see the type of communist that claim to represent what this tradition is. But that's why. I also, isn't Haas like five feet tall? I think so. Again, like this is so any any left leaning person here would have laughed in Hake's face. The idea that. Like, it's bad that communists in the West aren't traditionally masculine. Would like any real person on the left would have laughed this out, you know, like immediately. Uh, but he has to play into it because uh, an essential component of his political, uh, you know, advocacy of his program is uh, traditionalism. You know, men should be this, women should be that. But you can't skirt your way around it because to people like Hake, the idea that you should even fight for people's rights is like a feminine trait, you know? Uh, any kind of social liberalism, including the idea of economic rights, that, that would, they would consider that to be like a feminine trait. There's no working your way out of this, you know? China recently banned femboys. This is where that came from. I'm trying to set a different example, and several others are trying to set a different example, so that communism won't be associated with that uh, anymore. I do agree <laughs> that the so-called self-proclaimed uh, leftists and communists in America, in the main, the majority of them, especially the ones coming out of these universities and academia, they are fundamentally, morally, spiritually, um, however you want to put it, bankrupt oh. people. Um, they Is have no sense tool? of honor. They have no sense of dignity. They have very slimy, you know, tactics. I myself know this firsthand because I've been victim of them, right? I know how dishonest um, and inhuman and, and dishonorable these people truly are. Right? Um, I know that firsthand. But at the same time, the way I see that is... When, when, when they went on Twitter and made fun of me for not knowing how many holes a woman had, they used slimy tactics. <laughs> they, were, they were very dishonorable when they pointed that out. He's talking about, yeah, he's talking about how I pointed out the, the holes. Wait, hold on. We got a unique jewel. I've never gotten a unique jewel before. Rainbow facet. Death jewel 3-3. Three, three. Ooh, not a good roll. Okay, that's fine. It's still really cool. It's the same reason why you Lightning, see religions though. being corrupted. Because to me, evil takes the form of good. It disguises itself as good. But I do fundamentally <laughs> believe that at its core, communism is good. I just think evil people in this country specifically have been corrupting it. Um, for completely and wildly different ends. That's human nature. Isn't it interesting how at no point during this discussion, Haas has brought up or even attempted to defend communism? Literally, at no point has that happened. Every time Haik will just say, well, I think communists are degenerate Jews. And Haas will be like, okay, 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 maybe, maybe. But like, not all the time, you know? Well, okay, well, I think that, like, black people are dumb. Okay, 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 you know, all right, I get you, I get you. Uh, yeah, all right, well, I think, like, communist men are women. Okay, 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 like, he's, it's so cuck, dude. Holy shit. Can I be, like, can I, can I, can I be, like, toxic masculine if Haas is? Haas, where's your, where are your fucking balls, dude? You're such a fucking pussy, holy shit. Is, is it, this is, like, the great, like, warrior Haas? Like, like you're you're talking to some fucking nobody from the Jesse Lee Peterson show, and you're pussying out on every opportunity to defend what you pretend is your ideology. Because, like, what? It's more fun to like hear him degrade feminine men and imagine you in the opposite category. You're a pussy, bro. In any other society, in any agrarian society, you would have been the bitch stock of any group. Okay, you you would have been the goddamn peg boy of any fucking communal setting. Okay. You work out in gyms. You don't know manual labor. You're a bitch baby, okay? You have to ask your parents for help with the higher shelves, all right? Calm down, okay? There is, there is no situation in which you should be, out of, out of self-interest, if nothing else, posturing as some kind of persistent warrior of, of, of traditional masculinity to a Nazi. Jesus, fuck. Marx would be ashamed. Teacher, what religion were you? 
before you became atheist. <laughs> Every day is his day in the barrel. <laughs> yeah, uh, take a, who, who's going in the barrel today? Take a look at the calendar. Well, oh, it's just we don't have a calendar. We just we just have Oz's face drawn crudely with with a with a graphene marker. All right. Well, um, I came from a Shia Muslim background. Okay. Uh, qu last quick question. I know that I think we're running out of time. Um, the <laughs> they haven't Hong even Kong talked protests. about communism. Is, my impression is it was communist students fighting against the communist establishment government. What's your take? Uh, the the issue with Hong Kong is is very complex. But needless to say, as we've noticed in the United States and throughout oh, no. the world, you oh, have no. uh, vested interests trying to promote these color revolutions. Yep. And these yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, he doesn't, he doesn't give a shit about any of this shit. <laughs> Revolution to bring all this social unrest, and it's not really, uh, it's not an organic, like spontaneous thing, just yeah. like how we saw in the United States with George Soros funding <laughs> unrest and protests here. What the fuck? He can't, dude. He, I'm, I'm waiting on the full on Nazi Haas arc, dude. We, we gotta drop the, the bull from the Nas bull, okay? We, we need to be a lot more direct. These same people He's were funding so the unrest fucked. and protests in Hong Kong. Now, a lot of that grievances of people in Hong Kong came from the fact that there's no housing in Hong Kong, right? There's no land for people. It's, it's people can't find affordable housing, and it, life is getting harder and harder in Hong Kong. No, oh, the Hong Kong protests were pretty much all about people's fears that China would destroy the promised uh, two, like systems divide and turn Hong Kong into uh, part of the same political bloc. Uh, they were they they there was extradition for like political prisoners, and they did everything the Hong Kong people feared was happening and is happening currently and has happened. They were completely correct. Hong Kong. That's also because the communist government doesn't enforce its economic policies in Hong Kong, which are very pro people policies. So it lets Hong Kong have its own system. This led to a lot of grievances that because it was exploited by global. Um, oh my God. He's arguing the people in Hong Kong were upset because they weren't using the same system as China. He's arguing, well, why were the Hong Kongers protesting? They were, they were, they were mad they weren't living under China's political and economic principles. Forces was blamed on uh, the Communist Party, right, in Hong Kong. So I think we have to look at Hong Kong. Also look at the protests in Russia with Navalny. Look at the protests in Belarus. Look at the protests in Latin America. We should all look at these in the same lens. Of course, with which he's we look pro. At, yeah, yeah, With yeah. the same level of suspicion, a lot of the unrest that happens yeah. in this country. See, this is this is he's a fascist. You understand? Every movement he supports, it's just red fascism. Belarus, yeah. There's nothing even remotely Lukashenko, right? There's nothing even remotely left leaning about Lukashenko. Just a fascist. But he'll he'll say that any uh, any criticisms. These are Putin's talking points. Yeah, because Russia is like the arbiter of modern r red fascist discourse, you know? They don't even pretend to be left-leaning, you know? But uh, uh, fascists like Haas find it more aesthetically agreeable to uh, align themselves with this wing of fascism. But critically, I don't think there's any real ideological distinction between uh, uh, Haik and Haas. I really don't. Fundamentally, I don't. The only real difference is, like, which side of the same ideological conflict they would take, you know? Like, well, do you want to approach fascism from the Christian nationalist side, or do you want to approach it from the guys were totally communist, and that's why everyone who protests these fascist dictators in, in the, you know, in, in the former Cold War bloc states uh, is totally a part of, like, George Soros and the Rothschilds. Really, Dustin Gunn? Show me. If you can find it. Which creator? Interesting. That's about it. That's about all I have for you, for this. Ready to become a communist, James? <laughs> they didn't even no, talk about his answers for me are Haz's answers for me are they muddy the water. They do explain that Yeah, they do muddy the water. Wait, Josh Sawyer? Oh no. I follow Josh Sawyer. Josh Sawyer. I'll see. Uh 
Uh, yeah, studio design director for Fallout New Vegas. Very talented guy. Hold on. Oh no, he's on Twitter all the time. He's on Twitter constantly. There are likes from one hour ago, two hours ago, three hours ago. It'll be impossible to scroll through all of this. Let me see. If I scroll through like a day's... Oh my god, so many like tweets. Holy fuck. I'm... I've done like seven page reloads and I'm still one day back. Yeah, no, I, I would need to have it found for me. Sorry. A lot of this stuff is just evil human nature. But I think that a lot of it is, um, you can't, one cannot tell what actually happened in history. Look at, look at how the media lies about the present day. So we don't know oh, oh, no. what and what the motive was. They lie about shit. What, what, what have they lied about in history? I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> what, what are they being dishonest about, Hank? And can we get Haas to agree? Wait, do you think if Haig just flat out said, like, I feel like the Hollywood liberal elites overplay the severity of the Holocaust to make white men hate themselves? If he said that, do you think... Ha I, honest to God, at this point, I feel, I feel like, I feel like Haas would be like, well, I don't know if I fully agree with that, but I do agree the liberal Democrat-aligned elites will often invoke meaningless culture war issues to... Like, don't you think he would? Yeah, he would fold like a chair. I bet. Oh man, I wish. I wish Hake would just do it. Fucking do it, Hake. Do it. Ah, give it to me. Charlottesville. They lie about the capital, mostly peaceful capital protests. On Charlottesville capital. They lie about the Black Lives Matter movement. They even seem to have Haas fooled on the black community's uh, grievances. So it's to me, I think it's a who knows, who cares type of thing as far as the history goes. I like to know present day reality, have responsibility, and not throw out God with the bathwater. Juicy, any last thoughts, Infrared? Um, I think it was an overall productive, uh, good conversation. Um... <laughs> I would shoot myself. I would. Oh, man. Uh, I, I, I don't. They didn't even talk about communism. It didn't even like, it didn't even come up. It, it, like not, none of the ideological or economic precepts. We didn't talk about economic control of the means of production. We didn't talk about statelessness. We didn't talk about decommodification. We didn't talk about any of it. Um, you know, I guess I would say with regards to the black community, I think this is our main point of contention. I would just recommend reaching out and, and listening to many black leaders, right? Because these are not people who are co-opted by the Democrats. They're against the Democrats. Is he going to say Nico and, House is uh, socialist? I do think they, they, they authentically, um, you know, are leaders of their own community. They have uh, their own specific views. Agreed, and they're completely though. demonized by the mainstream media as well. And it's something that they have in common with American conservatives. So I just uh, think that that's important. Uh. The community. They have... Uh, their own specific views and they're completely demonized by the mainstream media as well and it's something that they have in common with american conservatives mm -hmm. so i just uh, think that that's important for unity but you know i do overall agree that the media sows unnecessary american conservatives american socialists one struggle one struggle let's go necessary division but at the same time that doesn't mean we shouldn't be trying to make an effort to bridge those divisions because there are in my view at least you haven't described the realities. divisions i like to <laughs> Yeah, do you have any? <laughs> who would be a black leader that that you think of yes. as a leader? <laughs> well, historically, you have organizations like uh, the Nation of Islam, right? Oh man, yeah. I mean, you have uh... people who killed Malcolm X. Nice. Currently controlled by Luis Farrakhan, a Nazi. Good, very good. I like. Huh, who's the first person who comes to your mind when you think uh, when you think of a uh, uh, black leader? Oh, I think of. The Nation of Islam. Really? That's the first thing that comes to your mind. Just, it, that's the, that's the one right off the dome right there. Really. Um, yeah, let, let, yeah, Ha's brain vibrating at intense speeds to quickly think of the worst organization. 
<laughs> the worst group he can imagine, you know? Um, yeah, no, guys, never ask Haas what, who his favorite German leader in history is. Worst mistake of my life. Uh, 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 well, uh, <laughs> uh, L L Luis Farrakhan doesn't even pretend at being a lefty, right? L does Luis Farrakhan openly call himself a fascist? What's his economic prescription? Let me see. Views. Okay, what about, like, socialism? Nope, just social media. Uh, economic? Nope, just that. Uh, commun- Nope, that's community. Community, 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 community. Okay, not that. Fascism? Nothing for that. Does he even have any economic- Now search anti-Semitism. What if I just searched Jew? A uh, 58! Wow! This guy must have a lot of opinions on Jewish people. No, we we know what he's about. We 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 know we 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 know what he's about. Let's just uh, you know, you have other you have the traditional Marcus Garvey historically, and it's Marcus Garvey was an anti-communist. He was explicitly uh, uh, he was explicitly an anti-communist. He was a pan-African uh, 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 white or, or, or black separatist who wanted uh, fascism. Garvey told historian J.A. Rogers that he and his followers were, quote, the first fascists, adding that Mussolini copied fascism from me, but the Negro reactionary sabotaged it. He was... But... Mussolini copied my homework. Clipped. I think it's okay when you're reading historical passages to say that word, okay? The O is fine. The A and the R aren't, okay? But you can say the O. Otherwise, you couldn't uh, read anything from MLK. Uh, anyway, um... Jesus. How is this the leader of the theory? Like, he explicitly anti-communist. In fact, wait, if I open that again, I'm pretty sure I can find... Hold on, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just incredibly funny to me. Like, who, who's the greatest enemy to communism? Oh, it's like George Soros and the Democrats from Haas, you know? And then he's like, okay, well, who's a black leader? Well, what about this fascist? Hold on. There is no evidence Garvey was ever sympathetic to socialism. While in the U.S., he strongly opposed attempts by socialists and communist groups to recruit African Americans in the trade union movement and urged African Americans not to support the Communist Party. He viewed the communist movement as a white person's creation was not in the interest of African Americans. He called it a dangerous theory. Um, the Communist Internationale characterized Garveyism as reactionary bourgeois philosophy. This is who Haas is holding water for. And he noted it was a secular movement, too. God, it's... Uh, yeah, okay. I know that me saying over and over again that Haas is a fascist, like, doesn't hold much water because I've said it so many times and all of you already understand and believe it, but, like, Jesus Christ, it's just funny how obvious they make it. Successors. You have Malcolm X, historically, who famously called the Democrats the wolves in sheep's clothing. So it's a very... Did he have any other opinion? Did Malcolm X say anything besides criticizing the Democrats? Or was that to the totality of his ideological... He was killed by the Nation of Islam. So, like, Malcolm X famed for his belief that the Democrats are bad. It's like, well, they it, read from that and nothing else, you know. Rich tradition, and there are living people who... Um, who are I, I talk with blacks practically every day on my, <laughs> on my radio show. Some of them have sense. Some of them agree with me. Many of them agree with me. Many don't. Many have that anger. They've taken on false identities. They think they're black Hebrew Israelites or they have embraced the Islam stuff, the nation of Islam. What do your parents think when you left the Shia Muslim thing? 
Um, I, I, I think they were okay with it. Um, Wait, the Nation of Islam guys who killed him were exonerated recently, dog? Wasn't the person who killed him literally Nation of Islam? Like, directly killed him. Hold on. Nation of Islam exonerated? Two men convicted of killing Malcolm X to be exonerated. Oh, hold on. The 1966 uh, convictions of the two men are expected to be thrown out after a lengthy investigation validating long-held doubts about who killed the civil rights leader. Two of the men found guilty of the assassination are expected to have their convictions thrown out. For decades, historians have cast doubt on the two men, Muhammad A. Aziz and Khalil Islam, who each spent more than 20 years in prison. Their exoneration... There were like five people who were convicted. Okay, wait, yeah. How many people were convicted? Hold on. So wait, these two weren't the ones who killed him directly. They were just convicted as part of the conspiracy to kill Malcolm X. But there were still other Nation of Islam members who, whose convictions are maintained. Because it would be very surprising if the conviction was overturned on the guy who was found to have killed him directly. Because I think the case against that guy was pretty solid. Okay, the assassination of Malcolm X. Shot multiple times. Three members of the Nation and Islam of Nation of Islam were charged with the murder and given in indeterminate life sentences. Two of the men were exonerated. Okay, so one of the three, uh, one one of the three remains. The third one admitted to it is, was on video. Okay, okay. So my point stands. But it was the FBI too. Yeah, it was. You kidding me? You think the FBI doesn't want the FBI? Uh, ha the F. Honest to God, I feel like um. The reason Malcolm X was assassinated when he was, was probably because he ditched all the cringe fucking Nation of Islam perspectives, you know? Nation of Islam is a gift to the FBI, where, where their radical advocacy is like, uh, what if we all just leave, which is never going to happen and has absolutely no bearing on any material reality. Whereas later in his life, Malcolm X actually did believe in you know, meaningfully changing the circumstances within the United States for African Americans, that's far more dangerous. That's why Fred Hampton was dangerous. Because Fred Hampton was based as shit. Anyone who listens to Fred Hampton and doesn't want uh, racial equality and socialism in the U.S. gets fucking danger alarms going off in their head. If Fred Hampton was just another lunatic who was like, uh, we should all just move back to Africa. He wouldn't have been assassinated because he wouldn't have been a threat. He would have been meaningless. He would have been another radical. It's the re reason Luis Farrakhan is of no one's interest at the moment. He can't affect anything. He's a lunatic. Nobody cares. He'll never do anything. But Fred Hampton was powerful. That's why they killed him. Also, the Nation of Islam guys were crazy. <laughs> that was also a thing, you know. Primarily because... You know, I, I did have issues with religion uh, growing up, but I've come to a perspective where I have great respect and reverence for all of the world's uh, major religions. And also I have a new, I acquired actually as a communist, a newfound appreciation for Christianity and in, in particular, right? Because of how closely entwined communism historically has been with Christianity. So to me, um, everything I find beauty historically and truth is intertwined in all Christianity the great, in the West. Uh, That's I think it's important is. that we not get caught up in the identities where you can't just tell where you can't just tell people the truth on for for example for the hate report i call on my show i call i call blacks out i call women out i call uh, the black hebrew israelites out and they can call in and and uh disagree with me i call both the rhinos and the democrats out the mainstream media but i think that we should be have the freedom the freedom of speech to just say our impression especially whites and men because they're and christians they're some of the most docile and submissive lately and fearful and intimidated falsely intimidated because you know look at what ha is happening with kyle rittenhouse he's charged with murder i feel like i feel like hake is baiting haas at this point i want i wonder so so what is haas's response going to be here uh yeah i actually uh, uh i actually i do agree white people don't have enough freedom of speech <laughs> what are we where are we going with this one over a clear case of self-defense people are, don't have justice and we have lost I, a sense of justice and freedom here. I, I definitely agree that I do believe that Americans' freedom of speech has been curtailed, specifically and especially by the big tech companies. And regardless of who I agree or disagree with, I do think people should be allowed to give authentic expression to what they really do believe and um, what they Fucking really do feel. Fucking spineless, because regardless dude. Regardless of whether I agree with it or not, and how um, suck it's his a own first cock? step in being able to come to an, uh, a point of unity 
and mutual understanding. Yeah. And as I, I think a good example of this was recently, and I, let's not uh, get into the details of it because you know I'm on Twitch, so yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what. But recently with Dave Chappelle's Netflix special, right? And he was trying to just give authentic, you know, expression to what he believed, and he was uh, he was he was canceled. That's actually a really telling thing right there, isn't it? So as you guys probably saw, Haas lost his mind about the tra the Dave Chappelle stuff on Twitter. But here's the thing, okay? Haas correctly uh, infers that if he talks about this, uh, that Hake will go off and talk about, you know, crazy transes or whatever. The thing is, though, uh, Twitch TOS would only hammer down on Hake, not on... Haas, unless Haas joined in. There have been plenty of cases where, uh, y where you know, a um, where a one person has been banned for for going, you know, Joker mode on a panel, but the other people there haven't. It's just, it's just interesting, you know, like the language there was more of a like, let's not get into it, more so than a please don't say anything bad about it yourself kind of dealio. For it, he, now he's having is trouble it, finding. Is, uh, it, is that how it works? Yeah, I've, it's it's happened. Yeah, where like one person a panel show gets banned, especially if you're pushing against it. If you have a person on and they they say something bigoted, you're pushing back hard against it. I I've never. Well, Twitch can be really inconsistent. I I'll say it's fifty fifty on this one. I'll say it's fifty fifty on whether or not it's a it's it's you know an, an indication that he would join in on the rhetoric or, or otherwise. Ways to get his his movie published and, and stuff. So it's like his stuff published i mean so you know it's 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 really a shame that we've just created this culture of lying and people not even being honest because they're too scared to speak what's on their mind what? you know one quick other point you mentioned black leaders i think that one of the problems with men is that we have people that we put, put up as leaders we should not be doing that we should be our own leader and then we unite together and work together and somebody if somebody's going to be a, a president like a trump then that's fine but he is not he is not put up on a pedestal where he is influencing our thought any more than any other man would be. You, and you can hear the truth from any man, even the even Hake your enemy. anarchist arc. Let's I, go. I agree with that. I do agree that we should we shouldn't get caught up in as men, you know, especially as men. Ah, I can't speak for women because I'm not a woman, right? So fault. I can just speak for men because that's what I am. My experience. Um, so I'm not Reno. assuming that they they're different or something, but I'm just you know I agree that we we shouldn't be relying and putting our putting all of our trust in just other men, right? Part of being a man is being your own man, having your own thoughts and being able to think for yourself. So I completely agree with that, you know? Um, I think that's been the part of the problem with the black community is they've had these people that they've propped up as leaders and they've made them into heroes. And you see you see human nature to do that, especially nowadays. Because here's the aimless. thing is that I think, ultimately I believe that black people themselves know what's best and know how to best diagnose their own problems, right? I think that they need our help. We're all human Laughs. beings, and we all have the freedom of speech, and they can they can hear the truth from other races. They need to learn to do that, especially but, whites. But they, but they, they also have they close their minds to whites, and it's not good for them. Ah! Well, I don't know if that's necessarily true because they just oh. have different experiences. You know, they have a different situation. They have different uh, circumstances, right? But, and and oft oftentimes, it's hard too for much white racism? people to relate to that because they don't share those same experiences and, and same circumstance. But they're but they're all nose up against. Sorry. I have found the tweet that Josh Sawyer liked. Hold on. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, sure. Vosh, a guy who is constantly appearing on my timeline with takes that have me going, this guy is absolutely red marks. Oh, the take I'm getting canceled for here is, and they, they tried to ratio me on this, but they couldn't because I'm undefeatable. Marxism, Leninism is the moderate wing of fascism, which seems very relevant to the content we're looking at right now um josh sawyer no josh sawyer you can't be smart enough to help design fallout new vegas and stupid enough to disagree with me on anything a disappointment Maybe he didn't get the joke. Well, the 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 tweet here, in order to like it, you would kind of have to know who I am, because the tweet's not really in response to just this. It's sort of broadly about me. Unfollow? No, instead we'll we'll begin a, a campaign of passive aggressive uh harassment. I'll throw rocks at his window, IRL. That's not true. I wouldn't do that.
Uh, a bit disappointing, though. This imaginary problem that, that's called racism, whereas whites don't have that blind spot. And sometimes it takes somebody from the outside looking in to see through the, the madness. Well, Occasionally, that, someone that, will wake that, up. Well, listen, that, that also manifests in the form of white people not experiencing this, this racism, right? So if they haven't experienced it... It doesn't exist. Well, that's, I think, where we would definitely have to disagree. I oh. think racism is a, a real thing. If, if racism is real, then blacks are the primary offenders. I, I don't agree. But one thing I can say is that, to me, as far as I'm concerned, um, the Democrats uh, are a very racist party. And... <laughs> Holy shit, he can suck his own dick. Dude, what a spineless weasel. Uh, uh, oh, well, I don't n necessarily ag ag agree with you that, that racism doesn't exist, but, but, but I will agree with the d d d d d d Democrats. Holy shit. God, how does Haas not know how many holes there are in a pussy when he has one? When he is one. Jesus, has he looked in a mirror? Holy fuck are a big source of what I would consider real uh, white supremacy. I don't think that rural, ordinary Americans are the main culprits of white supremacy. I think it's actually the Democrats and the liberals who are the most uh, effective sources of racism. In Do you think white supremacy is, is happening in America? Obviously, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what America you're But I, I just think that... <laughs> the funniest thing is that as hard as, as, as Haas is trying to suck Hake's dick, it's not working. Hake is actually so stupid and so ideologically uh, single-minded that he's just continuing to run down this road. He ignored everything about the Democrats that he that Haas was desperately using to appease the Nazi and ran right to, oh, so you think racism exists at all? Like, like it's it's worthless. Like he's he's compromising so much integrity trying to do this. And, well, I guess he didn't really have any to begin with, but still. Um and, and it's for nothing. It's absolutely for nothing. It's completely meaningless. God. I just think ordinary Americans and rural Americans who are white actually have more in common with black people in terms of, you know, being down to earth people right. instead of being these stiff, you know, liberals who do epitomize what we consider white supremacy. Right? That's why Trump. But, but most black people are Democrats by a huge majority. You can't get around this. You can't say, oh, dude, you know, uh, uh, we just need to listen to black people and stop listening to the Democrats and liberals. I'm sorry, there's a lot of overlap in those categories. It's not a perfect overlap, but it's a pretty significant one. Uh... Trump was such a uniting force for people with any decency. Well, in, in many ways, you could say that liberals were even more, far more white supremacists than Trump, because. Haas, Haas, fondle the balls. Ha, do the twisty motion with your hand. Haas, more spit, please. Holy shit. Uh, 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 well, I actually, actually, no, I, no, I really do think Trump was the best president in American history. I just, you know, compared to the liberals, at least, compared to Obama, I mean. Um, he was more relatable, this is a public more down sex to earth, act. whereas they are more obsessed with purity and political correctness. And many have Trump out was more down to earth. White supremacy, but regardless, the billionaire real estate mogul who was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Uh, we're being very proletarian here today. Yeah, this is kink at pride. Holy shit! The fuck! The complete spinelessness. Jesus fuck. I'm so ready for Haas to watch this on his stream. He well, he couldn't watch the whole thing, right? Like, this is too much for him, right? There's no way his ego would let him watch the whole thing. Haas, if you've watched from the beginning up to this far in, I unironically applaud you. I thought you were way too fragile. I, I didn't believe in you, okay? I should have had more faith in your tenacity because I've never seen somebody try to suck cock this hard, okay? Jesus Christ. All the trans GF subs of Twitter are in envy of your determination here, okay? Um, yeah. Are your parents more conservative or, or liberal? They're, they're really not uh, political. Not political, yeah. yeah. You got it. We'll jump into the Q&A. This has been an enjoyable one to say. I want to follow so the Q&A. Want to remind you of a couple of things. One, if you have a question, feel free to fire it into the old live chat. We'll go for about 30 minutes. And also, our guests are linked in the description. So if you want to hear more of James Hake or Infrared, you can, and that includes if you're listening via podcast, because we put all of our 
guest links in the description box for each podcast episode as well. And so you can find their links there as well. So jumping right into it with this first one from Lin Yan Chin says, debate is useless noise that never resolves anything. It just... It's just true for amusement. Men don't do that, but beta males do. God bless you, Lord Good Hair. Thank you. Appreciate true. that, Lin Yan Chin. <laughs> Next up, Shaggy Boy says, let's go. And Anna Rodriguez ah! says, I love you, Hake. Nice. Love Amazing. you too. Ozzy says, You convinced me. Havoc. Is havoc like a some sort of slang word? Is that are they trying to make fun of you, Hake? They say, I'm an atheist, so I must be communist. Sarcasm. <laughs> Then they say, thanks for convincing me that I am not on your team. (laughs) Well, all atheism is not communist, but all communism is atheist. Juicy. Wow, I'm actually surprised he was able to hold that thought together in his head long enough to to provide a, you know, an aphorism. I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually kind of proud. He actually, you know, that was... That was like that was like saying it like a, a you know some arithmetic out loud and actually getting the right answer at the end. Like he, he actually held all the pieces together. This one coming in from Chris Morlock says there are almost as many people in China that identify as religious as there are in the U.S. about 120 million. Why is this, James? There are more than 120 well, million religious there may people be, in the U.S. I'm I mean, there's China. there's so many there's so many uh, people in China for one, but you know under under hard life, I don't know. If they are real Christians, it's hard to know. It's hard to know how many real Christians there are in America. So many, as Haas pointed out, so much of so much of the organized religions, it's just filled with phony people. And so I don't know, maybe the tough times are making a Christian movement rise in China, but for sure, there is a they have to suppress themselves. They Do you don't think have Hake even goes to church. And I've I've heard of struggle sessions in uh, communist worlds where they just they don't really they try to force people to believe things that aren't true. And if you don't believe, if you don't believe it, you go through what uh, Dave Chappelle is going through <laughs> or worse, really. What? You got what? And this one coming in for infrared. Kevin Dunn asks, why can if, if you believe something that's not ideologically orthodox, the CCP will tweet at you from like a very verified account. OK, it has a red check mark because it's the CCP and they tweet at you so hard communists openly be on all big tech platforms but n-a-z-i-s can't no not yeah us. uh i think the issue is that there's just not a lot of people who are informed about communism and the the mainstream um political wait, establishment, wait, wait. a lot of i can you got it and this one coming in for infrared kevin dunn asks why can communists openly be on all big tech platforms but n-a-z-i-s can't because one is bad and one is good. <laughs> Easy answer. Uh, I think the issue is that there's just not a lot of people who are informed about communism. And the, the mainstream um, political establishment hasn't had to deal with, you know, there has been a very clear neo-Nazi uh, phenomenon. There's been, you know, a kind of right-wing, uh, ultra-right movement in the United States. There hasn't really been a communist movement in many, many decades in this country that has posed a threat uh, to the establishment. So I think that pretty much explains the majority of the reason why there, you don't really see a crackdown on it. It's just because it's it's not really that it's politically relevant to the U.S. beyond recently becoming um, a symbol of, you know, the liberal democratic um, extremists, right. right? But beyond liberal, then... Liberal democratic extremists. <laughs> ah, yes, the, the radical moderate democratic party. Beyond that, I think it's all related to, you know, have you politics, I guess. have you caught hate for not hating white people enough as a leftist? He's gonna um, say yes. I have been accused of being a white supremacist. I've been accused of being a, a white chauvinist. And, and this was all because I insisted on the fact that communists have to be patriots. And that doesn't mean you agree with everything your government does or you agree with your government. Well, it well, means you have well, a love well, of your country well, and well, its people well, and your people, well, right? Well, well, and for that reason, I have been attacked and called a white supremacist, which is ironic because yeah. I'm not sure if I am considered white. I don't, it's not something I pay a lot of attention to, but right. my parents are from Lebanon. I'm from an Arab background. So it's, it's really weird how people are trying to use race against me when... White enough, you're white enough to be hated, I guess. Yeah. Uh, this one coming in from Chris Morlock. For you again, Hake. They say there are 44 million Christians in China. For comparison, there are in total about 18 million, so far less, Chinese people <laughs> that live in the U.S. How is the People's Republic of China against Christians? Why is this what they care about? <laughs> this one 
from Chris Morlock says, America is against Christians, by the way, just FYI. But anyway. Says, quote, religion is the sigh of the oppressed creature, the heart of a heartless world, and the soul of soulless conditions, unquote, Karl Marx. That's nice. It's uh, tough times do make you turn to God sometimes, and that's important. Karl Marx, although he was a blind atheist, was right about that, I guess. This one coming in from John Kramer says, I'm here to support Hake of the Hake Report. Says, keep speaking the truth, brother. Also, thank you for having this platform. Thanks for your encouragement, John. And as mentioned, Hake, Hake. we're here to support you, Hake. Thank you. Appreciate that. Black Lennon says, question for Jake. I think they mean Hake, but yeah. it might also be <laughs> Hank. They say, what do you think of the labor aristocracy? Do you deny it? What's your thoughts? Why would you ask? I have no idea what that is, the yeah. labor aristocracy. <laughs> we, by the way, it just made me think, we need T and Earl here. Anyway, <laughs> red but Red-blooded Republican Trumps says how do you explain sorry i cut your name off there friend i, I know it probably says more than that but it says red republic red-blooded republican trump dot 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 how do you explain the current failures of communism in america being the american indian reservations Wow, I actually felt like a chill go down my body. Is that what an aneurysm feels like? That that actually felt worrying, like medically. Whew. Okay, wait, I'm gonna just give just give me a second. Whew. All right, we're okay. We're we're gonna keep we're gonna keep trucking through, okay? Um I, I don't know exactly what that's referring to, but I think the failure of the communist movement within the United States um, I think is a theoretical issue. It's it's the problem is is the type of people, intellectuals who are attracted to communism, um, do are attracted to it because they're antisocial and they you know they I guess they were the losers in life and you know, they turned to <laughs> communism for that reason. But I don't know how this relates to the reserv reservation system. But um, I think that's how to explain the failure of the movement to ever really be able to kick off here. I think he's pointing out that the American Indians they they get uh, payouts whether it's from the casino payouts and things like that. And that ends up being debilitating to them. And so they don't end up doing for themselves and working for themselves and taking responsibility. I've known some Indians who got kicked out of their Indian tribe. And that was honestly the best thing for them. They quit being deadbeats. They started working and got their lives together and get, had families. Well, I think uh, all I would say to that, I'm not really familiar with the situation of the reservation system, but what I do know about it is an important part of communism is sovereignty. It's being able to have the necessary level of control and self-determination over your community. And as far as the reservation system is concerned, it's, it has been a form of, um, we all know that the, there has been various treaties violated and the way in which uh, Indians, or I don't know if I would say Native Americans, have been um, have been treated by the U.S. government has been very unfair. And they have been, you know, uh, they have not had a good deal, as far as I would put it, if you want to put it in Trumpian. Trumpian terms. So I don't know if it'd be a good example of communism as much, maybe uh, internalized corruption. And yeah. You seem to have like that same woman's mindset, if you will allow me. Yeah. If you will allow me. Yep. Have you guys ever seen a Haas this cucks before? Like you have a, we're getting very lucky with these key drops. Uh, uh, you have a woman's mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Like, have you ever, I've never seen him this submissive. Like, I unironically think that Hake's winning this debate. I actually, I genuinely, that's not ironic. I genuinely do believe that. I think in terms of the, the cohesiveness of the argument presented, I genuinely believe that Hake is winning. And that is, that is wild beyond belief. You know, that is insane. But. But I guess that's the that's the world we live in. Yeah. In that you have like this feeling sorry for these different so-called oppressed groups, these uh, mi minorities, if you will. Us as a woman. Well, now. well Trump, Trump talked Indians about how being forced the feminized. current U.S. government wasn't it wasn't a good deal for the American people. The, the policies true. of our government and its industrial it's, policy. That's true. American people were getting ripped off. It's not necessarily you know making excuses or blaming. It's just pointing out that the Native Americans uh, or so on, they haven't had a good deal, right? They've been, you know, as far as their relation to the U.S. government is concerned, and that should be investigated. But it's a complex issue. But the one thing I will say is that I don't think it's an example of communism, and that's something I can be certain of without knowing uh, much else. You got it. And this one coming in from Creo DeBunk says, Hey, have you heard about kybernetic economy? 
any objection to that. And I don't even know what, can you tell us what it is, Hake, if you know what it is? I cannot, c cybernetic or cybernetic they, economy? They put it with a K, cybernetic. <laughs> oh, they interesting. Cybernetic, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't know. If Haas knows the answers to these questions, he's welcome, but I don't know. I think he means cybernetic, but it, I think it's a complex issue, so. Yeah. Well, Did you know the- a, The cybernetic economy, that's a complex issue. Oh, I've read a, a economic papers on the cybernetic a kybernetic economy that's nonsense the cybernetic economy however <laughs> i can't with these guys man i can't do it i can't i should just quit debates forever i'm clearly not meant for this space anymore i should just stop <laughs> this, is, this isn't right did you know that uh, other thing that labor he said the that, that's like a community meme uh just okay. the guy i was i debated before okay uh, yeah you got it and long nights youtube and long time viewer good to see you says how do we explain the government putting drugs in the street creating the war on drugs snatching the father out of the home then acting like white people know how to solve our problems when you've created them curious they, they said hake at the end so i think that's for you hake. <laughs> so i didn't put the drugs in their community i didn't take the father out of their home and honestly the best thing for them, if the government was involved in that, I know the government did bribe them to have the father out of the home That's as a bribe. And I know that they made uh, conditions tough or whatever for you know people in general to make a living nowadays or buy, buy a property. But the best thing for us, and I think this is addressing the communist, that, that false imitation of logic, that false imitation of manhood, is responsibility. If, blacks, if the black community who surrendered their fathers had, took responsibility for that, rather than continue to blame the government, which is evil, and, and it is against them and us and everybody, then they would be doing much better. And I think that that's, that's why I'm concerned about whites and white anger and white. the appeal of this version of communism that's not so anti-white uh, is appealing to that anger, which is the lie that you have a right to be angry and to blame when you're better off just taking responsibility. And then you can, then you will we'll have the strength to fight back in the right way. And you'll have the wisdom too. You go well, ahead. Go ahead. I, I don't think, I think black people are taking responsibility, but they're also <laughs> trying to point out that, you know, they don't want people outside their community to try and force things on them. Right. So I think that's part of it, right. It's part of uh, having your own self-determination. I don't know what you mean by people outside their community forcing things on them. Well, I think they, I think um, black people know what's best for themselves, right. They know the best answers to their own. If they, they did, the would they be voting 96, 98% for Democrats? Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, a curious rebuttal. One I would like to know the answer to as well. I just sounded like the fucking internet historian there. Um, I would also I would like to know the answer there because Haas has uh constantly jumped back and forth between liberal Democrats are destroying the country and are the real racists but also listen to the black people. But when you listen to black people, they vote Democrat. However you may feel about that, it seems to be the case that a lot of uh, black people are liberal Democrats. So do we actually want to listen to black people or do we only want to listen to the minority of them that don't do that? Voter turnout is very low. I know, but would they be He's going to weasel around did. it. He's going to be like, well, I, that I can't speak not, on behalf of them. Really I'm count. not myself black and... Uh... I don't. I wouldn't. You can I can't see. speak on it. A fresh one coming anyway. in. This one coming Amazing. in. Amazing. Annihilation Prism says for Hake. <laughs> Weasel out of Lenin it. Lenin praised Washington's 1776 and Lincoln's anti-slavery crusade in the Civil War as revolutionary in his letter to the American workers. What is your response to that? It's a red flag. I think there's a lot of melodrama about slavery and this pretense that it they make it sound worse than it really was. I think there's <laughs> much worse evil today. I think the Democrats today are much more evil than the than the Democrats who own the slaves, and huh? uh, the, the 1776 thing. Okay, okay, Haas. Okay, we know Haas doesn't have a spine, but is there a single vertebra? Is is there a single? Is there even like a bone sliver? Like, is there anything going on in there? What Haas? This is your chance. Redeem yourself. Take the bold step. Say that slavery is bad. Actually uh it's it's nice it's a nice sentiment i i get that they want to latch on and support the the revolution but i think our revolution I, as far as my impression was more righteous and based in in god and nature and nature's god 
right? Whereas the communists are atheist. You got it. And that is it for- Is he really not going to say anything? Oh my God. Is he seriously- oh, He doesn't even have any spinal fluid. Questions we do want to say not folks, a word. Our guests are linked in the description. What we really a appreciate bitch. these guys. The debaters are the lifeblood of the channel, so you can find their links. But I, I think I think oh. I think come oh. on, we can't most Americans understand that slavery is probably the biggest historical evil in, in this country. I think I mean for, look, how we, gotta, is, we can't say. I mean, you surely you understand slavery is a great downtown. historical evil, right? I don't know. I don't know it, why there was there were decent and indecent slave owners. I, and I, I, it's not I, it's not ideal. It's not ideal I, to have slavery, but it's not, not ideal, ideal what we have today. And we have actual like mass killings of babies. Look, in the look, world. I think I think on this point, that's just a red line that I don't think I could ever come to an agreement. Is he going to like, agree to disagree that, this I think one that is way beyond the realm of conceivability for just normal, even just normal Americans like it's an, it, like slavery is the it's evil was so unprecedented in the history of humanity that like this is yes absolutely <laughs> absolutely and oh, uh, man he has a lot Haas has a line we actually found a thing that Haas won't just yes and this is we're finally we, we finally found it it was it was gonna be this or holocaust denial maybe maybe on the holocaust denial but let's go let's find out how far does it go yeah, that is. It, just, I mean, it was a reality of all of history. No, the slavery that existed in the United States was qualitatively different than historical slavery because we, we it was, it, it was a modern well. form of slavery where slave owners were able to do whatever they wanted. To. There was no like, you know, we made them Christians. In, in, in the past, slavery merely referred to um, a relation of power that existed before, ambiguously. Right? In, in the Islamic world, slaves were able to actually take power. Right? So it was an ambiguous thing. Slaves and were castrated in that, the Islamic I, look, world. That's that's just coming left field, right? It's just left field to talk about America to try and downplay the crimes of American slavery. We fought a civil war to eliminate that evil from the face of this country. You did not. Uh, millions, millions uh, <laughs> died in that war, and you I know, know to, to try, I think it's fundamentally anti-patriotic to try and downplay the historical evil of slavery. Well, addition, part of that is the, an attack on the South. The beautiful South is more Christian, more down to earth, more decent, honestly, to the black community than anybody else in America. And regardless of the South today, we did fight a civil war to eliminate slavery and to- We did not, they did. To downplay the historical evil of slavery is a form of treason in my view against uh, the very basis of this country, right? Well, honestly, they were not treasonous when they fought against the, the, the North. They had legitimate grievances. Uh, we, we, we can't, we don't have- Shoo, Haik, Haik is a Nazi. Um, he, he's, he's a Nazi Nazi, like full on. Uh, so yeah, he'll, he'll defend this and a lot of other stuff too. Um, I, I genuinely can't tell how much of his chosen language is a product of his mind numbing stupidity. And I do, ge I genuinely believe he works with Jesse Lee Peterson. So they're, they're both kind of on the cognitively, you know, they're, they're not on the up and up. Um, well, am I having to say Nazi, Nazi, the absolute state of things? No, when I when I call a person a Nazi, I mean they're a Nazi. They're not as uncommon as people like to think, you know? They're pretty prominent in, like, German paramilitary and police forces. They've never really left the United States. America was pro-Nazi, largely, until the war started. The ideological precepts of Nazism have never meaningfully been destroyed. They've been challenged and mocked in media, but destroyed not so much. And Hake here is... Well, I guess he's operating at about the intellectual level you'd expect for this sort of thing. But anyway, let's 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 let them take it away. You know, I have time to get into a debate about uh, the question of the Civil War, but I do find it extremely appalling and inhuman to speak about slavery in this way. You know, because I think it's I think you, it's you will inhuman. never you will never be able to come to a common understanding. Or yeah, yeah, sure. I, I, he's with the not various different people in this country. If you try to downplay the historical evils and injustices, I'm telling the reality of it. The black community. No, I think you're, I don't even think you adequately represent the Trump's own movement when you say this. I think even Trump's movement can admit the extreme historical evil that is slavery, and to stoop to such a low level, I hope so. so as to try That's and downplay that and insult uh, the the black people and citizens of this country, I think that is fundamentally appalling. Blacks should be grateful. To be in this country, they should be grateful for that by way of slavery. No, no, you're, you're, that's just, what you're I'm saying serious. is just a bunch of nonsense. You're no, what you're, what you're saying is nonsense. Right what no, no, you're no, saying no, no, you're is keeping them angry. Nonsense right now. <laughs> Black people fundamentally played an instrumental part in no. building this country. You're nope. talking about they should be great. It's no, complete no, nonsense. They no, should uh, be grateful. No, no, no. Should they no, not no, be grateful to be here now? You're speaking a bunch of nonsense right now. 
you're no, speaking you're, a this bunch is, of This is right communism. Now. This and, is and communism. By saying this, actually, by saying this, you're serving the current establishment because you're no. trying to sow unneeded, unnecessary racial division by saying no, this is reality. so anti-human and inhumane. No, you're, yeah. you people support abortion. Give me a break. We're not talking about abortion right it's, now. We're talking that's about much worse. Talking, that's much worse. We, than it's we happening are talking today. about the fact it's happening that today. insult against the black people no. of this country. You're the one insulting them. You're seeing them like children. Compatible with any pretense that you want to see past nope. the divisions and and get to a point of unity. You you're know, you're treating like, blacks uh, like children. You should be ashamed of yourself. It's sorry? pathetic. You what think you like a, you think you think like a female. You're treating the blacks. Okay, you're you're speaking about thinking like a female, like a woman. I, I can't I can't think of anything more fucking cowardly than trying to downplay the historical evil of slavery. It's either that you're ignorant and you don't understand no, that, just or you're being deliberately malicious. No, you just, you Brian have to use, you have to use the misery. You have to use the anger. Revision. You have to use the false anger about something long past. In Listen, order to yeah, I don't know. Wait, Haas might be losing the conservative audience here. He needs to tone it down a little. You are saying unspeakably evil things. If, you, no. if someone was, if someone was advocating in favor of pedophilia, would you not be angry? It's long over. What, what if someone? What if someone was defending pedophilia? What if people that do it well, a little bit angry? They do it. Well, all hold on. Wait. Are they? Are they doing it as part of a broader hypothetical argument against child exploitation in the economy, or are they just doing it for its own sake? Because that critically changes the, the context of the question. All the time. They do human, it all the time. Okay, but it's human beings. <laughs> human beings should be angry when people say unspeakably evil. No, you, you fight evil. Yeah. You fight that evil, is, but you don't be that angry. That is fundamentally an evil thing you're saying. No, it's I, not. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> Slavery was one of the greatest historical evils How in so? history of humanity. How so? <laughs> because it was the modern form of slavery. Um, complete. It's literally in the name. People were reduced to objects. They didn't even have the minimal status of human beings. I understand. I understand. It's not ideal. And, and the devastation that this has caused to the black community and the scars of this evil oh, to this gosh. very day. Not true. Um, That's yes, a lie. That's a lie. Absolutely. Nope. Ab the and only you scars. About, you the only about, scars are the you anger that you talk about issues facing alive. the black family. Yeah. What event in history could be more catastrophic I'm gonna lose for building it. the foundation of a family than something like slavery? Slavery. They had their families more than today. And they had their families after slavery. <laughs> you are, it was the you 60s are and 70s. Nonsense right now. The, no, it's the real. Look it up. And infamous cruelty of the no, you're ignorant right here. Listen, we fought a civil war to you eliminate did not, this evil You did not forever. stop saying we. We did. I am an American. I was I know, born in you, this country. I'm you, just as much of an American as you are. And no, I'm an anti-American. -American. So, yes. You're feeling sorry for the blacks. blacks. We did fight that. You're feeling sorry for people long dead. They're... I am not feeling sorry. Yes, I'm feeling my patriotic duty of honoring the tradition and history of this country to fight and eliminate from the face of the earth the widely recognized historical evil of this country. That is I'm all gonna, I'm doing. I'm gonna you didn't throw even up. explain how it's evil. I didn't explain how it's evil that we say all men and women, all men are born equal, and yet some people live in chains and are reduced, they're attempted to reduce to the status of cattle and animals. I think it's self-evident. Uh, we made which, them Christians. Uh, we, uh, they were happy. There's nothing, than... nothing Christian about the institution of slavery. It's a mimicry it's of not, the pagan not, form. It's irrelevant. The pagan form of Roman slavery. The Confederates <laughs> were among the leaders Roman of the Confederates were among the debauched, pagan. depraved, and decadent <laughs> elites in history. Some of them had were nothing to do with Christianity. They were more <laughs> honorable than you or me. Secretly, there you had the elements of uh, paganism and complete uh, anti-Christianity <laughs> among. This has nothing to do with Christianity whatsoever. The most fervent Christi Christians at the time were fighting to free their fellow man from the bondage of slavery. John Blacks Brown was fundamentally a religious. A terrorist. He was, he was absolutely he was an angry terrorist. Christian. John Brown was an angry terrorist and a murderer. Is the slavery you, you, in call, you call John Brown a terrorist and a murderer, and meanwhile, the Union Army was singing his This song. is communism. By any means necessary. Just anger and lies. Listen. And murder. Listen, pe human beings have the right to be angry about fundamentally no, unjust things. Not true. Yeah. No, they don't have that, that the right to be angry. Were the blacks, yes, the blacks enslaved in, they in Africa? Do. Is that evil? They, they absolutely do. And you are playing into the tropes of the media that all conservatives are racist, which I do not fundamentally believe. Because you think I'm racist? racist? I think it is fundamentally racist to try and downplay the historical evil of slavery, and you are particularly insulting the black community no. to such an extent that no possible inroads or alliance or reaching out is possible between uh, you and blacks, blacks calling into my show every day agreeing with me. They're not as... Guys. If, if anti-slavery types really aren't communist, then why was it called the Union Army?
checkmate. As, I, as soft hearted as you think. If you were to say that slavery was not that bad, I do not think uh, you would have people believe. Uh, why do you? Why do you need it to be so bad? It's not that I need it to be bad. It is a matter of historical record that it was a fundamental evil. It's inscribed into the very basis I feel lightheaded. of our country as from the Civil War. The Civil War wasn't in order to nothing. In order to ignore the present day evils that we have going on right now. It's insane. Listen, you Look honestly at the evil. sound more like a Democrat right now uh -huh. than anything else. I can't. I can't. I fucking can't. I fucking can't with this, man. This is so fucking good. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's so fucking funny. Ah! <laughs> I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm being I'm being broken right now. This is too much. This is too fucking much. Now, for you to apologize for slavery, I'm not a, the Democrats also oh, you mean defending it? at the time is just fundamentally appalling and revolting. Are opinion. Democrats not worse today than the, than during slavery? Therefore, killing the they babies in the womb? Today. Listen, there is no need to uh, lie about the historical ref record and change things. He to can't even challenge the abortion. If anything, abortion. if it, are you are you kidding me? Have you seen the people making a melodrama about slavery? Every slavery movie, the 1619 Project, just outright lies. Yeah, and the way, the, way, yes. the way you right. combat the lies of the 1619 Project is not to deny the historical evil of slavery, but to recognize that it was the intention of the Founding Fathers from the outset to eliminate this evil, and the Civil War was the manifestation of this inevitable historical mission. A historical mission I would call a holy mission, even. I think that it's just that just as you can't recognize good, you can't properly recognize good. That's That's total bullshit, by the way. Sorry. The founding, some of the founder fathers being like, uh, slavery is bad, I guess, but like, <laughs> oh, I don't know, it's pretty good too. That's not, that's not them undertaking in a holy mission to defeat slavery, okay? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not buying it. It's evil. So well, I think we that are not going to be. I think to, you're getting emotional. We about are it. not. We are not going to be able to agree upon this. No, I know. I understand that. Whatsoever. But your your argument is emotional. Well, Very it's womanly. Not, it's not simply emotional. And communism is slavery. Listen, you you have said something fundamentally appalling and anti-human. That's all I can say. No, no, it's not anti. Abortion is anti-human, and the Democrats today support Listen, it. Listen, there is no need. There is no need to address insult. that. Address there is no abortion. Need to insult an entire group of people by trying to downplay the historical evil of slavery. They don't. The last thing they need is people feeling sorry for them and pretending that it was so bad. We they, are they did not even experience it. Normal, I don't think American conservatives agree with you. We were talking about I don't a very think they normal baseline. And that's why they lose. Sure. No, that's why Americans you, you, conservatives you are, are losing. Beyond, you are beyond the threshold of sanity. Who are you? Asks the American conservative. Hake looks back at them. I'm you, but stronger. And Hake's carrying Mein Kampf. <laughs> and also he has a slave with him. I don't know. What? Whatever. You get the joke. <laughs> got a few more questions that just came right. in. This one from Chris Morlock says, how can James Hake claim to be a Christian when he cannot see evil? Oh my God. Amazing comedy bit. Okay. Amazing comedy bit. Okay. The far right is resurging in America to trigger the libs. They're doing slavery again. It's crazy, right? Cops aren't stopping them. Okay. But one far right pro slavery guy gets really mad because he's walking his slave around like on like a big metal collar and chain during Pride Month and people keep thinking it's kink and he gets really frustrated and hijinks ensue. That's a fucking banger comedy premise right there. Holy shit, that's good if done well. That could be so fucking funny. Like getting increasingly angry. Like, no, 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 he's my slave. And they're like, yeah, how long have you been together? Oh my fucking God, that would be good. Evil is slavery. Because slavery is not inherently evil. It's not ideal. You don't want it. If you can get your freedom, you should do so. I, I suppose I'm happy. I don't know if I'm happy about the way it went down. I hear a lot of things about, about that stuff. What? But evil is real and evil is more subtle than these people realize. Long Nights YouTube and says, as a black man, thank you, Infrared. <laughs> Simp. Shaggy Boy <laughs> says, y'all read Streamlabs? We don't have Streamlabs. It kept crashing on us. Amazing. But based on it says, Hank, how is an economic system that encourages greed and envy more Christian than one that promotes equality and helping your fellow man? 
that's what communism is. It's based on envy. It's based on covetousness. It's based on jealousy and anger True. and a false sense of justice. It's playing God when you're not God True. and you think like a woman. True. How does it feel to think like a woman? I told has... you that's going to get us in trouble. With oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, my bad. How does it feel? says, yeah, yeah. Hank, how – we got that one. Chris Morlock says, Hank, or Hank, does the Bible <laughs> not say in Exodus 21, 16, quote, whoever steals a man and sells him and anyone found in possession of him shall be put to death? I think that was talking about fellow Israelites. The, the, even the Israel, the black oh, shit, Israelites he's got a fucking response. They're pro-slavery. They just don't want to enslave one another. Gotcha. I think there might be one more. This one coming in from Hitch Wagster says, Haas, aren't you framing slavery as a past evil and ignoring all the slavery that we still have today? No, I'm. my position is crystal clear. All I'm doing is doing the baseline recognition that slavery was an utmost historical evil that should not be apologized for downplayed or uh there should be no revisionism of this fact we should recognize this baseline fact of a war um that tore this country apart on the basis of the recognition of this fact this is I'm simple as that in islamic countries they they were castrated in african countries they're enslaved to this day i don't think that it, i think that you're downplaying the worldwide evil and I, I don't downplay, the evil of, i'm of not America. downplaying any uh, instance or evil of slavery whatsoever but i'm just recognizing the qualitatively distinct and distinctly evil nature of slavery. No, Shu, you can't actually argue with anyone. Hake, Hake is an NPC. He's also, by the way, a troll. Why do you think he kept saying, you're getting pretty mad. Why are you a woman? Why are you a woman, Haas? Like, he's a troll. He he knows what he's doing. Um, <clears throat> He's also very stupid. Those aren't mutually exclusive. He can be both of those things, I think. It's just... um, But yeah, no, you, you can't actually... There's no real point in debating people like this. Except for the spectacle of things. But for me, this debate is only fun because Haas is also a lol cow. If Haas was replaced with a sensible person like uh, like uh, Jangles or or you know or just like another, just like a real left leaning debate person, it would just be like frustrating and boring because they would like explain why X is dumb and they do, they wouldn't get it and it would just repeat over and over. Um, so, so for me, it's critical that both of them be be fucking stupid. Oh, in case you guys care, look how many high runes they've gotten. Look, three pull, two um, three mal, uh, ten ist, uh, two vex, two um, and also I have one of each of them right over here. I have enough to barter for a bear rune at least on the American continent, specifically um, leading up to the Civil War. How old are you? 25. Yeah, see, that's why you're brainwashed in this way. <laughs> I, when I was, I'm, I'm 40, when I was in school, we learned that there were good and bad slave owners. Listen, I think that's just that's just common sense. That's just common sense, dude. So, this, this view is fundamentally incompatible um, with communism. <laughs> this is like saying there can be a good and bad rapist. <laughs> that's kind of true. Yeah, it is kind of incompatible with communism. <laughs> that's 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 true. There's nothing to do. There's nothing about slavery that's rape. Yes, there certainly is. Actually, nope. well, yes, there is. Nope. Actually, there nope. fundamentally nope. is, and it's on. A, it's a matter of historical record and no, widely I, documented. I, I recognize that there may have been rapes that took place, but that's rape. Rape is wrong. Slavery is not ideal. And, and the two rape. were fundamentally aligned with one and another. You're claim you're making that claim, but again, there were no. It is common a matter sense of, says, it's a matter of historical fact. So every slave owner is fond committed of a rape term. against every slave. Listen, the two were fundamentally intertwined as you're a just, phenomenon. You're making you're making it. Okay, clear we as are mud. speaking nonsense. Let's continue to move clear on. Clear as mud, just muddying the waters. This question coming in from Steve, who says, "I could be wrong. Maybe I misheard him. But did James Hake say that slaves were quote treated well? They were treated well. Many were treated well. They were they were raised Christian. Some were even taught to read." True. Which reading was not I shouldn't widespread say even among whites. So overall, we treated them quite well compared to many other cultures. This one coming in from Adam Albilia. Good to see you, long-time viewer. I, should, I shouldn't say true. It but... seems like what Hake is trying to say is that, quote, you haven't demonstrated how enslaving people is evil. Yep. I think it's a matter of, it's a self-evident and absurd uh it's the, the the reason why is just self-evident. If we have to get to a point where what no philosophy does to a motherfucker. How much ph philosophy terminology does Haas flippantly use, and he can't even answer this question? You're not going to like trash argument. It's self-evident. You're not going to make an appeal to like bodily autonomy or to consent. 
What about um, individual liberties? The way Hake was talking about earlier, like, feel like there are, feel like there are directions you could go with this, you know. We have to debate about um, why slavery is fundamentally evil. Then everything else becomes up to debate too, right? Yeah. And I don't want to arrive at a situation where we have to start debating about things like pedophilia and things we we know intuitively and inherently to be wrong. God is self-evident, but you're relying yeah. on your feelings. You're lost about that. Um, like I said, there are things, there are lines we should not cross as human beings, as a matter of basic human decency this and one, humanity. Sorry. This, these are such bad Jesus arguments. Take, how do you react to the British deep state's attempt to assassinate Lincoln by supporting unpatriotic John Wilkes Booth and the Confederacy? Also, shout out to Infrared and RTSG. I don't know much about that, but it sounds like it was evil fighting against maybe evil. I don't know whether Abraham Lincoln was good or evil because I just, you can't trust any history nowadays much less the mainstream media present day. You got it. And with that, do want to remind you our guests are linked to the description, folks. It has been a lively one to be sure. And an interesting, an interesting contradiction that I've noticed from Nazis is that many times they're pro John Wilkes Booth because they think that like <clears throat> slavery was based and Lincoln's behavior was unbased and that by reuniting the country, he brought the South in control of like the Jews in the North or whatever or that Lincoln was being controlled by the Jews. But the interesting thing is that also when Nazis talk about slavery, they'll say that that Jews scapegoated onto white people and that in reality, Jews were responsible for slavery in the South. Have you guys noticed that juxtaposition? They do both of those things at the same time. Like if they actually thought Jews were responsible for slavery, they should be like, oh yeah, Lincoln stopped it. Good, he stopped those Jews. But they don't say that. They believe both things at the same time. Yeah, they do this all the time for every issue. We are excited for this other lively one that I had mentioned earlier yeah. in the stream as we have confirmed it just a couple weeks ago. Destiny and Stefan Molyneux in the last week of this month. You don't want to miss it. That's What's going to be the a debate juicy on? One, so that subscribe button and want to say thanks again, James Hake, as well as Infrared. It has been a juicy one to say the least. Juicy. Thank you guys. Appreciate that. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And I'll be back in a moment, folks, to give you updates on upcoming debates. So stick around for that. Okay. Bye. Wow. Well, we did it. That was the thing that happened. That was the stupidest shit i have ever sat through in my life that was remarkable uh i can't i can't i can't get me out of here get me out of here get me out get me out let me out please get me out oh, let me out please god yeah uh so what are my thoughts after all that what are what are my prescriptions pause is really bad at debating and i think it's really telling how the the thing the thing to me is in a way Haas standing up against slavery at the end was almost even more spineless because in a way there's an admirable consistency to him folding to Hake on every single conservative issue but he wasn't even consistent on that there was the the last one he had to challenge you know what I mean like he was he wasn't even he wasn't even like spineless he. He wasn't even, like, consistent enough to be properly spineless. He had to be spineless about being spineless and, and throw the defense up at the last second. I am glad that he said giving, like, the slavery is bad. It's just, that's where your line is, really? You know that meme where it's like, I can excuse this, but that's going too far. And then the lady says, you can excuse that? You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, phenomenal meme. Fantastic stuff. Uh, they didn't even talk about communism, like, at any point during any of that. What a waste of time. Uh, <laughs> does this remind you somewhat of Blair White? Oh, yeah, you guys remember when Blair White talked to Lauren Witzka, that Nazi lady? Uh, she was with that Red Eagle guy. And Blair was like, um, I think like if trans girls like are really pretty and they shut up and they don't ever go outside, then maybe we could not be killed. And Lauren Witzka was like, nah, no, you should kill yourself and grow a mustache. And Blair's like, um, I think that's rude. But also, I mean, like, I don't know, maybe I could like, like that. <laughs> that's, that's the level of cuckening. I feel like we're, we're dealing with here, you know, Jesus, fuck. <clears throat> Watch the debate if you haven't. It's got like half a million views on my channel. It's clearly popular.